Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Fantastic. Let's continue. Uh, I've done a little bit offline, but nothing too serious. Uh, cleared a little bit more biters. Uh, I've replaced the old um, item destruction area with something new. Well, an iteration on that, anyway. Uh, so, we're just using bots, and uh, let's see, we are requesting... We've got the encoded network IDs set up so that, um, for example, iron ore mines don't go directly here. It's only... Apparently, weirdly enough, the only resource we've got access of is uranium. Um, and that is coming from over here. Uh, before, before a resource goes to the dumping ground, uh, we're going to need to have, uh, let's see, 240 chests full of it, uh, which is over half a million in this case. Where is it? 574,000. Um, and I've got it set up that we'll be removing the big four, uranium, cryonite, vulcanite, bitter melange, beryl, fulminite, and iridite. And, uh, basically the reason for that is these are the resources that will block other resources from core mining if we get too much of any one thing. Uh, so because we're doing uranium core fragment uh, processing, if we leave this a fat boy not so slim, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, if we leave this going long enough, the uranium and stone here is going to be completely backed up, and we're going to stop getting regular core fragments which is going to mean we get less uh, iron, copper, etc. Uh, so it's the same principle as getting rid of uh, resources from core fragment processing, uh, the regular core fragment processing itself, if they've got nowhere to go. Um, I've set it up this time so that it's not just a dumping ground. If things turn around and we actually need some uranium somewhere else, uh, it is available for pickup here. And just to avoid any problems, I've done this in the easiest way possible. So a train arrives seeking uranium. Uh, the logistic train stop output is going to output, among other things, a signal saying uh, 8,000 uranium ore. We're going to set requests in these uh, requester chests for that. And the filter inserter you see here is set to the exact opposite, set filters blacklist. So if something is supposed to be in here, it won't get put in the active provider chest. Um, and we've just got inserters set to a stack size of one. So there's absolutely no way for this to end up sticking out after the train is gone. It will take a while to load a train here, but I don't think we're going to be loading trains from this station very often. It's only if we've got an excess of a resource, and then, for example, if I make another block uh, to do uranium processing, which we're going to do, um, then that uranium that's stored in this block is going to become available. Well, it is available to the logistic network. Um, we're requesting up to 128,000 uranium ore here. Uh, we need 320, which is two full train loads of uranium, before this will trigger a delivery. And somewhere between, uh, what was the number I came up with? 
uh, if we get over 60,000, uh, which is uh, seven and a half train loads of uranium, then and only then will we start to destroy it. Um, and I've actually set up a circuit here that's like a latch, but for all of these resources all at the same time. Um, we've got an input here of everything that's in the logistic network. And I just realized I need to change this right here. I changed uh, requester chests to buffer chests for the stuff that we're going to keep destroying here. How do you have the core mining take priority over the local planet mines? Uh, it's not even priority, it's the regular mines and some other stations, like for example this uh, erudite pickup right here, have a encoded network ID of 2. And the station that we don't want those stations to deliver to uh, is set to an encoded network ID of 1. So they have to be... it's binary so you can have multiple... a station on multiple networks, but th those two are on different networks and they have to be on the same network uh, in order to interact with each other. Uh, we've also got this set up as the lowest possible priority as well. Um, so yeah, uh, it'll only be, for example, uranium or coal or stone or whatever from this station uh, or a station like this one um, where the erudite or whatever it is is going to be delivered here. So do Omni Smelters only request from one LTN network? Uh, note the default if you do not use an encoded network ID, um, the, you can check this in the mod settings as well. Uh, I think it says negative one, but what it actually means is if it's set to the default network ID, unless you change this, it's allowed to interact with every other station, which I think is absolutely the best way they could have set it up. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised with, once I got my head around it a little bit, how easy it was to use these uh, network IDs. Salem Grandmaster, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so yeah, uh, here we have um, a circuit that checks if there's any bots moving. Uh, X minus Y and Z minus T gives us a total of zero if all of our bots are stopped. If everything equals zero, output one delivery can encapsule. That acts as the constant for this timer right here. I mean, for keeping them separate, do mines only go to one smelters or space or... Um, Okay, so the drop-off at a mine, at, at a smelter, for example, doesn't have an encoded network ID. So it's allowed to interact with every other station uh, in the network. And so a pickup station that has an encoded network ID of two will be allowed to deliver to this stop. But it won't be allowed to deliver to a stop that has an encoded network ID of 1. Makes sense. Fantastic. And the only other thing that's tricky about encoded network IDs is they use binary so that you can you can have multiple overlapping uh, networks uh, that a certain station belongs to. Oh. Um, so yeah, working back from here, we've got stack inserters shoving the resource in, uh, a yellow inserter, stack size 1, only puts, uh, delivery cannon capsule 
in at the moment that this timer has gone back to the start of the loop. Um, these are all, these combinators here are all just because I can't do a generic way to convert cryonite, for example, to recipe delivery cannon capsule cryonite. That's for setting the recipe for these cannons. Um, we've also got, uh, this just removes signals, big negative number in combination with each greater than zero. And so we're reading the logistic network contents without adding another roboport to this. Um, and then we say if, if everything is less than 32k output 600 uh, delivery cannon capsule here, that just effectively stops this timer. So we have to have at least 32k of something. Actually, I'll make it, um, I'll change this to 50k now. After doing a bit of math, figuring out what we can store here and everything. Um, so if we've got less than 50k of everything, we're not going to fire the cannons. Um, if we have more than 60k of something, we output one of that to this memory cell. If we've got less than 50k of something, we output negative that uh, to this memory cell. And uh, it's set to each greater than zero output each, uh, and it's touching itself. So basically, it's exactly the same as the usual latch that we make to deal with a power switch except we had to add one combinator um, in order to deal with the negative constant that we're spitting out here. So it was like green greater than red output one green. Um, if accumulator charge is above something uh, output green. If it's below something output red and why are we bringing me uranium oh i see okay cool so that's working um so we have our input whatever it is here we send a green signal or a red signal based on that input to our memory cell which uh holds onto a green signal if it's not receiving a red signal and has received a green signal. Uh, in order to change that uh, to use each, uh, all we had to do... How can I do this? Each greater than something, output each. Uh, each less than something, output each, except... Uh, instead of outputting one of something it's just going to be negative uh, so we could use exactly the same layout with combinators if we could just change this constant without an arithmetic combinator uh, so that goes there each times negative something output each so once something drops below 80, we're going to output negative a million of that to the memory cell. Um, and it's going to drop below zero, and it's not going to hold onto that signal anymore. So that was surprisingly easy to, uh, to make, actually. Um, and here we've got a slow and steady overall rate of production of delivery cannon capsules, which should be way more than we actually need. Oh, and I also figured out a really succinct way... What is this bot doing? Uh, I figured out a really succinct way to have a, a logistic trash system here. 
So basically, all we're doing is read logistic network contents, send it to a chest, set requests, and then giant negative number for things that we absolutely want to blacklist uh, from being in this network. So if I... If for whatever reason my flat solar panels end up in this robot network, uh, let me just remove that. If for whatever reason random stuff ends up in this robot network, it gets brought over here. And the trash train will come and pick it up. We need an extra chest because we can't read contents and set requests at the same time. Um, but if we want a specific number of things to be kept here, but uh, let's say we want to... Let's say we somehow end up with 100,000 copper plate here, but we actually just want to hold on to a certain amount of it. Um, we're just going to set a negative number for the maximum amount of copper plate that we want to keep in this logistic network, and the excess will get brought back here. surprisingly easy. Um, I think I could have come up with this stuff a lot sooner if I'd realized that negative numbers won't set requests on or set filters. Uh, and then this is just a vanilla train stop, um, which if there's anything in the chest we set the train limit to greater than one. I mean greater than zero. Hello, how are you? Overclock, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And uh, not too bad, I guess. Okay. So I had a little design in mind here. Um, I might do bot spam for another uranium block because it's just super easy and better UPS. But... If we use chests, it's not too bad either. Uh, what I wanted to do, actually, is... Just have the centrifuges swap items directly. And... Horizon Effect, thank you very much for the sub. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Seven months, much appreciated. Thank you very, very much. How are you today? Uh, okay, so we're going to keep uh, 40 Uranium-235 in here. I'm actually going to set this to 43 because the stack size of the inserter... And then, uh, how do, how do we do this? Like that. Uh, this will need to be a stack inserter, I think. Is this right? Oh, we need filters. Oh, I, I threw away my filter inserters. Whoops. Uh, let's see. I'm thinking we'll have the 238 down the middle, since it's really easy to have enough of that. These two can share. Um, I'll set this to anything, so it's generic. Anything greater than 43. And then on the opposite side, um, stack filter, uranium-235. Actually, I'm not sure if we need that. No, we do, because it'll... Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. It'll accumulate. Should probably use a stack for this one.
Okay, so this is my... This is my idea. For some... Some different cover eggs. How many of these can we fit with a wide area beacon? A few. Not that many. Cool. Um, I don't think... Oh, the other thing I wanted to do here was limit these chests. What is this? Uh, let's get some power here so that things will stop flashing at us. Drop some pylons. I like that perfect star pattern there. Okay, and how fast would this go? 0 0.06 per second for a single machine. Uh, 1.25 per second for this so far. That's pretty good. Okay, so, um, I think we only take from this if there's more than 43, and we only put into the next one if, uh, if there's not too much. Let's say less than a hundred. Okay, I think that's right. Now for the tricky business of copy pasting this without messing it up. Why don't we just delete this part? Blueprint. Uh, we'll use the navsat so it goes away. Blueprint this. Snap to grid relative. Height is four. Um, is that right? One more. Whoops. I ended up putting that in my inventory anyway. I think. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we don't take from this unless there's at least 43 of whatever it is. We... Don't put into this unless it's less than 100. We don't take unless it's greater than 43. That looks pretty good, actually. Um, I need to use stack inserters for this part. Why don't we just copy this, and then we'll run an upgrade planner over it. Do these actually need to be stack inserters? If we have stack inserters swapping the 238, uh, 235 directly between machines, then I think these could actually just be little baby uh, regular filters and fast inserters. Hey, I am Sir. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, that looks pretty good, actually. So I'm pretty sure these can all just be... Well, how quickly would this line use up 238? A whopping 1.6 per second. I think our fast inserters can manage that. So the only stacks we need are directly between the machines uh, to swap mostly the 235. Cool. 
Uh, let's put that a little bit more in the middle. And move this over a bit. I'll use both sides of the beacon. And I think that's pretty much it. Okay, so this whole block isn't going to be cover X. I think that is going to be about all we need and then some. Compare it to 48 of these. This is 36, but with a much better beacon. Uh, we're also going to need some regular old uranium processing. Um... Just trying to decide where to put things. Here we've got rocket fuel, uranium, 238, and iron plate. But I want... I'm considering having 235... Um, able to be dropped off here. Then again... Uh, I don't know if we should need that, actually. Alright, let's do some stations. Uh, also, let's figure out how much... Um... We'll definitely do four belts of uranium ore coming in, I think. At least. This is a lot of trees. Uh, so let's start with a 180 per second, probably, probably bring those all to the left, and then have some rows of centrifuges doing uranium processing. How many bros can we fit here? Uh, let's assume we do it like this. And if we put this really close together, if we use squiggly belts, that's as close together as they can be. Um, input belt. Probably won't need the squiggly belts, I doubt it'll, it'll make a difference. Uh, easier to start with the inserters, actually. Then we just do that. Output would be here. Um, unless we want to output specific things to specific sides of the belt. But if we run out of, it's like any output that has multiple outputs. If we were, if we run out of space for any one thing, it's all going to stop anyway. So that doesn't really matter. Um, let's suppose we even do a squiggly output belt, and then it's not going to make a single difference to how many of these we can fit. So we can just do it easy mode, I think. Yep. Um, although... This would alternate between which one's input and output. Uh, let's see. Well, first of all, I'm going to copy this out. See how far that goes. That doesn't fit. 
That is perfect, actually. Yeah, that's absolutely the maximum we can fit like this. Um, so I guess we're having alternating input and output belts. How fast would this be? We're going to have six rows like this if, if that's what we're going to do. Uh, each would consume 36 uranium ore per second. Is a little bit over 180 per second. So we can put some more efficiency modules in. Um, not sure how many though. Six times this is 156. We can do a little better than that. Um, wait, what? Oh, perfect. So this will consume exactly all of the uranium uh, that can come in on those belts. Um, and we would need... Well, hold on a sec. If this is... Why was I thinking 30 is a full belt as opposed to 45? Anyway. Uh, two of these are going to have to share an input belt unless we move them a little bit further apart. Which we might... So I guess these two are input belts, and this is an input belt. Uh, how many is this? 24. Gives a uh, 60 uranium ore per second. Um, multiply this by 6. 216 per second. Okay, so that is actually too fast. 192 per second. 168. We overdid it. Exactly 180. Fantastic. Okay. So what's our power consumption? Plus 490%. It's only 2... I say only, but it's 2 megawatts per centrifuge. Um, that is relatively small in current Factorio day. How fast are we outputting? Very, very slowly. And also, same goes for inputting, pretty much. So we'll put uh, just fast inserters. And on this side, same thing. So we've got one, two, three input belts, one, two output belts, but we have way more out, uh, we have way more input than output, right? A lot more. So if we multiply this whole thing by six, it's actually less than a single red belt. Okay, so we can just merge all those together. Actually, maybe I'll even use red belt just to differentiate this a bit. And we'll copy, paste, flip, put that on the other side. And that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six uh, inputs. I hope we don't need a fancy balancer, but we might. Uh, each two belts has to split into three. 
and it's going to be completely saturated. I, I think we just... Uh, I think we can actually just do this super straightforward. New beacons, indeed. Uh, just the, the first tier of wide area beacons. Although I peeked ahead a little bit and noticed um, the wide area beacon 2 is actually the exact same size and shape. Uh, so we, we're never going to have to think ahead as to some hypothetical how are things going to be shaped with beacons anymore, which is nice. Uh, this one's going to be a bit different. Uh, Armored Dill Don't. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, let's see. I'll put that there just for the way it looks. And... Let's see how far this reaches. That doesn't line up very well, actually. I think I'll... Bring this back. And... Probably move that one a little bit. Okay. Uh, I feel like we're missing something. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, so, I also think we need another splitter here. Merge, split from that, merge again. Should be sufficient. Or we could probably put these splitters up here, that would probably look a bit more natural. Um... Down here, we need to merge, split, merge, and oh, that's a that's a very good fit. Nice. Yeah, so that should be all it takes. Um, let's do some stack filters. For uranium. Uranium ore. And I might just block this bit for a moment, but I'll get the station set up immediately. So we can grab that uranium before it gets destroyed. Um... Not that it'll make a difference in the long run, I imagine. Okay, so... Request stack threshold. Uranium. Couple of train loads. And... Set the station name. Switch this thing on. And make sure we let LTN know what's already in the station. Okay. I may move this up a couple of tiles, for example, but we'll see. Okay, my construction spiders don't seem to be carrying a whole lot of centrifuges at the moment. So we'll send them back for a few more. And then... Just deciding where I'm going to put things. I think 
we'll move our cover X up here. Um, more or less. Yeah, we're going to need the 238 later. Might just put it about here. And then... Uh, we need to bring the outputs together. So let's do that. Of course, I don't have anywhere near enough red belt. Okay, we'll use blues for the undergrounds anyway. But actually, if we're going to be symmetrical with this bit anyway... It's time to split these, actually, uh, to filter them. So we're going to want 235 on this side. Um, go this cliff. Should we just have them share sides of the belt? What's the total output from this thing? Six times this is less than half a belt of uranium-238. So I think we will do that. Okay. So that goes down there. Uh, we use some filter inserters here. They're going to have the same settings as this, effectively. Uh, so filter for this one is 235. Oh, sorry. That's the fil... No, not set filters. 235 and 235 is less than... I don't know. Uh, I guess even just a little bit. We're, we're going to stop the 235 here so that there's always enough to start cover X if it ever backs up. And here is going to be where we consider uh, our 235 to actually sort of come from effectively. Um, so I guess we put a splitter here. I don't believe the lanes merge correctly. Uh, oh, good point. Yep. Let's do this. Fantastic. Okay, so... 235 less than, let's say, 40. Don't put it on the wrong one. And I'll copy this and just change it. Uh, 238 less than 100. Fantastic. Okay, so down here we're going to have 338 departing on the middle. And then... Oh, 
Well, actually. Okay. I could probably... No, it's fine. 235 comes out here. Let's get our spiders back. That's not going to have a good middle spot, is it? This is probably fine. Whoops. Oh. And then... I might bring the 235 and the 238 together over here. So we've got our uh, uranium processing, we've got coverx, we just need uh, uranium fuel cells and nuclear fuel. And I want uranium fuel cells to be a higher priority. I also want to do a neater job of the output stations this time, rather than having just a small one stuck on the edge over here. Uh, so we'll have nuclear fuel, 235 and 238, and uranium fuel cells. We can actually just do that on one of these. Um, I think for nuclear fuel, uh, it needs to get picked up so rarely that we'll just do four chests. Um, the stack size is effectively one, but we'll override it anyway, just to be sure. And we won't need any fancy, uh, any particularly fancy loading circuitry for that one. On the other hand, I think we're probably going to end up with plenty of spare room. Um, just like... Uh, just like this block over here. We can probably just do multiple train stations. It's nice and easy. And there's no risk of... Um, having the circuits go wrong. Or anything like that. Or not necessarily the circuits, but some kind of problem with the layer... Uh, the... The, uh, I didn't mean to put straight rail there. The contents of the chests before the inserters start. A hey, Carenza, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hey, T Hex, hey, chat. Hey to you as well. Uh, do we need straight rail here at all? Oh, we do need this bit. Okay. Uh, we may have gone slightly overkill with the number of machines we made to make nuclear fuel over here. In any case, we won't need uh, half as many with a beacon. I think we'll maybe just put this one in the middle because I'm sure we're not going to need a lot of machines. Oh. Let's put it here. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to need much to keep up with the demand uh, for nuclear fuel or uranium fuel cells. We still need to do... Hmm. Uh, we need a rocket fuel drop-off. An iron plate drop-off. And I don't know if we're going to do... I don't think we are going to do a 238 drop-off. Yeah, I think that was something I added. Like, trying to fix this thing, basically. 
Although, we did notice sometimes we wanted to take what was stored here and use it up here. But, I think with the way we've got this set up, CoverX is... It's not going to output anything until... Oh, I should definitely add something here. It's probably unnecessary, but I'll set this to say... 235 is greater than 40. Um, and then we can be absolutely sure that we're not going, we're not going to output any 235 that, that doesn't keep us fully prepared to go full speed here. Okay. Uh, so, assembly machines... Uh, fuel cells, productivity bonus. And we need both types. Oh, we still don't have the red belt because that's just something I carry. Okay. I want... I want 238, like, okay, 235 storage issues sorts itself out. 238, the problem eventually was it ended up being too full here. And we actually have to stop this belt. So... I don't think the problem that I was thinking about is actually going to be relevant. What I was going to say is I want to make sure we can't, like, consume all the 238 down here um, in order to... leave this not able to put the 238 where it needs to go. But this thing's already taken 238 as a priority and stored a bunch of it. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Also, we could probably stand to uh, store quite a bit more 238 here. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Anyway. Um... Is there a universe where I should just... No, I'm not going to put the 235 back on this belt, at least not here. Um, I think... Well, we're going to have them go to separate stations anyway. Let's just build those stations first. I'm thinking we'll be picking up 238 the most often. So I'll put that closest. For the trains, that is. And... This goes here. I might put this on this side. Just for the sort of symmetry of it. Bust inserters. going to be okay so 
first of all. Uh, T38's going down here somewhere. fast is this? Uh, 3.8 and 0 0.2 per second. Let's see. Oh, we don't have speed modules yet. How fast would this go? 60 U238 per second? I think that is more than we can handle. Yeah, I don't know if we would, I don't know if we even need a beacon for this part, to be honest. Um, how about rocket fuel? I mean, nuclear fuel. Where is it? Uh, fuel? Nuclear... Oh, it's made in a centrifuge, isn't it? go. How fast would this be? 0 0.04 E235 per second. It's not a whole lot. It's surprisingly slow, actually. Uh, how fast would Cover X go? This would consume... 6.48 uranium-238 per second. Okay, we've got that covered. And give us 2.5 U-235 per second. So we can pretty much have as many of these as we want. Um, same goes for fuel cells. Okay, fuel cells is going to be bottlenecked on 238 in this block. Let's assume maximum rate of 238 and practically none of it. Uh, this can make 2.5 v235 per second. This would only need this would need 3.2 per second already. Okay. Hold on, remove this for a sec. This would actually already be net negative uranium-235. So we need like, just a handful of machines to use all of that. That's still net, that's just barely net positive 235. And with the rocket fuel, I mean the nuclear fuel, 0 0.04, that's one every 20 seconds almost. Still positive. Okay, so that's that's going to use up all of our 238, actually. It doesn't use any 238. 
This uses 45.6 per sec. Jeez, that's a lot. Okay, 20. 20 is what we can get. Um, let's drop this down. How many can we do? Uh, literally just a couple if we want to also support the cover X. Okay. How's this? Uh, barely net negative 238. Net positive 235. So if we were only using the 235 in this block, that should be pretty good. And that gives us a nuclear fuel every four seconds. Probably want more nuclear fuel. In theory. Yeah. Nuclear fuel is actually sort of shockingly cheap. Or at least on a per second basis. Okay. Should we use efficiency modules here instead? So it's a slightly less of a shock to the power network? I think we'll be okay. The minimum consumption is going to stay the same. Alright, so the only question is how we lay this out. Um, I think... We'll put... Can't have this touch that one. We'll put some nuclear fuel production over here. Probably, let's just put that there first, so we have a better idea where all of this fits. Splitter. Splitter. Actually, I'll do it this way, since it's going to be so slow. Uranium-238 and rocket fuel can fit together like that. Or maybe even like this. Now oh, that's a bit too cramped. A couple more of these here. I think we'll drop off the rocket fuel up here as well. No path. Why is there no path? Oh. It's actually no path to... Well, that, that would probably explain it. Uh, let's send our instruction spiders up here. And we'll just jump off of the roundabout here. Connect that up like so. And don't forget to add some signals. What's the... Okay, I see. Uh, this will be a chain signal, and, and this will be a regular signal. Cool. Um, but anyway, we'll add a... I can't change the name of the station for now. Rocket fuel. Uh, 
the overall throughput that we're going to need for rocket fuel here. It's going to be pretty slow. I don't... I think this is going to be enough as well. It, we can always change it, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be enough to, like, support the entire base. Uh, so... We'll just do the minimum in terms of chests. The stack size for rocket fuel is also very low. And we'll bring these together. Make sure it uses... Actually, since it's so slow, we don't even have to worry about uh, which side of the belt we're using. Um, we just have to... Oh, I'm going to need some fast inserters here first. I might just use these stacks because I have them. And we're going to... Read the belt as well. Didn't realize you could copy paste settings to bits of belt that don't have the wire connected already, but evidently from the sound effect you can. Alright, and I'll just change those back to fast. This is going to be rocket fuel. And I think we're already requesting it. Fantastic. Alright. I think we can keep this layout. That's fine. Just have to figure out where this is going to go. Uh, so we can have it squeeze through here. Something like this. Sydney Kansen von Ice T. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, where does this reach to? One off. Tragic. I could bring this down a tile. Might look a little weird. I'm pretty sure we're not changing this. That's fine. Oh, wait, that's... Yeah, there we go. Like so. spiders. Oh, they're finished. Fantastic. Alright, please come... Actually, go by the mall first. We have, uh... Whatchamacallit. I'm not seeing any centrifuges over here, so let's go to the more modern mall. Where we should have plenty of centrifuges. 54, fantastic. That's not that much actually. We don't build... We don't place centrifuges often, but when we do... 
Apparently we're not trying to make any either. Okay, let's just add that here. Make it 200. And why aren't we making this? We need electric furnaces. Why aren't we making electric furnaces? Because why not? Uh, in space exploration, you need all of these as prerequisites before you can make an industrial furnace. Okay. So we should have a few more centrifuges by the time the spiders get there. And we should have a bit of uranium. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to need some uh, iron plate over here. I might just... Maybe I should have, like, some intermediate storage. No, we've got plenty of storage here. Just put a couple of those there. And then we need iron plate. Which is going to be dropped off here. Come to think of it, it... Maybe it's not too late. It might have been neater to bring the rocket fuel down the middle. Uh, it's fine. Ragamuffin, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Left 90... Left 90, there we go. And this is... Iron plate. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting something. I'm not. It's uranium. It's uh, 235 or 238 that I was considering having at the drop off here, but I don't think we'll do that. Okay. So this one is iron plate. Requester. I want to check something. I, I found something out today that may amuse you. Uh, it turns out with the navigation satellite and picker dollies, we already found out that not only can you move things around wherever you like, uh, like it's got unlimited reach, but you can also move trees around if you so desire. Uh, the latest thing that I found out that the combination of these mods will let you move around is the player itself. And it turns out uh, that will indeed get the bots in range. <laughs> Fantastic. You can also rotate the player if you so desire. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Overclock. Um, I might go grab these red belts and stuff as well. We'll get our construction spiders to come back. Uh, a tag. Centrifuge. Fantastic. Oh, and I actually wanted to set this up so that, uh, so that it can be a pickup for long trains as well as short trains. And considering that the rate is going to be slow, 
Uh, we're not going to need a balanced loader circuit or anything. All we're going to have to do is limit the chests. Seven stacks each. We're going to set the provide stack threshold to 168. And uh, so that's not going to summon a train unless these chests are completely full. I did say earlier we've got lots of storage here, so we shouldn't have intermediate storage. Maybe that should change a little bit. Um, but first, standard pickup, copy the constant combinators, we're already resupplied, I love my speedy spider. I wonder if I can make the spider go faster with pick dollies I can. Theoretically, if I could hold shift, mouse over the spider, and keep pressing the cursor keys, tapping it to the right, if I had three hands and I was very precise. Well, actually, I would only have to get the first touch correct. Oh my goodness, this is a little trick. Anyway, <laughs> theoretically, you could use it to go a lot faster. If you had three hands. And were very, very precise. Okay. Uh, let's... Maybe you could use it in a speed run. <laughs> let's, uh, get our iron plate sorted out. Wait, I didn't... I didn't set up my personal logistics. That was a wasted trip. Oh, no. Um, let's go iron plate. Connect to LTN. Iron plate and switch on, and we'll just swap this. Since we're going to be Bringing it down here. Let me just check the rate on these things. Iron plate is four per second. That's the only... 7.6 per second for the uh, uranium-238, actually. We've actually made this fast enough to need a stack inserter. About this. This is our iron plate. Four point zero iron plate per second. Let's just go with stacks. And what's this? Alright. Uh, there should be a train coming here with iron plate. Sooner or later. Is this rocket fuel? This is uranium. Oh, we've got the rocket fuel already. Nice. I forgot to set the settings on these inserters. 
just want to set them all before I copy this. Read hand contents hold everything equals zero. There we go. That should be pretty even. Even enough for the next train to not mess things up. And then, how much red belt are we missing here? 74. Let's go get it. Personal requests are on. And let's get our military spiders back into it, shall we? Start with the expansions. And is that going to get stuck? It might. seems as good a place as any to get a bit more serious. I hear a lack of spider legs moving around. Fantastic. Back to our new block. And then Probably do more than that in one trip. I'm sure they can actually. But just for the sake of me not having to give them attention, bring them back to the mall after that. And away we go with probably the end of this build. Oh, this goes here. This goes here, this goes here, fantastic, why are you stopped? Because the belt stopped. Cool. And I'm surprised we don't have a single 235 over here yet. it is. I think we'll cheat ever so slightly. And grab some from over here. Get these two Obrix machines started. That's weird. Oh, it's my logistic crash slots. There we go. That's pretty fast. I mean, it normally takes an entire minute. And we have productivity bonuses. 
How's our power looking? Am I being too greedy? Not even. Okay. Fantastic. Wait, what happened here? How do we only get 32... Oh. Hmm. What if we change this stack size to one? And I also want it to be... Uh, enable, disable, everything equals zero. I think that's right. So we're not going to... If this insert is doing anything, this one's not going to pick anything up to give it back to itself. I think this will be fine. It'll just take a little bit longer to get started. Maybe. Probably should have done some testing before I write this build out, but what can you do? Okay, let's see what this looks like. I'm just going to start by... Wait, what? Oh, I... wait, why would... Hmm. I think I hurt myself in my confusion. Uh, if this goes here... Most of it's going to get pushed into the next one. I think we should just remove the stack inserters, to be honest. Once it's going full speed, it would speed things up. But to get started, uh, it's not very helpful. It could be very helpful with certain sensor data, but we don't have that. Where did the rest go? Like we would need to we would need to use a chest or a counter or something. Um to figure that out. Oh. This might actually be a terrible design. This has to be... I think I put this bit of logic in the wrong spot, and this should have been here. Alright, let's remove the fast inserters. And we're going to add them again. We're going to say there has to be enough here to keep this one going at full speed. Um, there's going to be some downtime. Well, actually, this is going to keep going until it's doubled, so that'll 
probably sort itself out. Missing setting on filter inserter in the second half of the middle centrifuges. Second half of the middle centrifuges? Uh, I don't understand. Okay. So that's going to go there. It's going to go there. It's going to go there. And... Do we even need any more circuit logic? Uh, for the 235. First input into chests from belt. Missing setting on filter inserter. Oh yeah, true. Thank you. Um, so we're limiting this chest to 100. And we're only taking if there's more than 43 here. Doesn't that mean this chest will get full? Is that a problem? I don't think so, as long as there's room to output the 238. It should be fine. Uh, oh, this should say anything, not everything. Because if the... just arbitrarily, uh, everything is true when there are no inputs. Okay, so now our 235 has been spread all the way across here. Let's make sure we fix these other ones. Do it. And this goes here. Alright, that should be sufficient. It's just not a particularly advanced cover X where we accelerate any faster than what we can get with splitters or something like that. Because each machine will take two or three times the 235 that it needs to get going. I'm surprised. Oh, what? What? Oh, I see the problem. We got to tell LTN what we've got rocket fuel wise. I was going to say, I'm surprised we're not seeing that we've seen the uranium dry up here because. We've been sending it to this block because we've got too much. So that should sort that out pretty soon. We may see a train pick up uranium from here, which is going to be a slow process. Each inserter has to swing 2,000 times. Um, but with a stack size of 1... We're not going to be using these pickups often, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and a stack size of one is just by far the easiest way to make sure it doesn't malfunction. Okay, so we've got everything but our 235 here. We should definitely prioritize 235 on this belt. And then... Can we do a long arm? No. Did I limit these? Yes, good. And 
this is set to 168. Fantastic. Uranium fuel cell. Forgot to set it so that short trains can pick up from here as well. And... I don't know that we'll ever need long trains picking up nuclear fuel. But it's fine. It's probably fine. Fuel provider, uranium fuel cell provider, 235, 238, and I think that's it. Once we get the also, the iron showed up without my noticing it, which is good, I guess. I wonder if I should make the rescue stuff from the trash pick up a higher priority. Wait, we need 320 stacks. Which we've definitely got. So given that we set a higher train limit here... Um... We should definitely have trains picking up from that station, but they seem to be going to the mine first. So I think I will bump up this priority ever so slightly. And we should see a train come here to pick up uranium uh, relatively soon. Uh, wow, that's going through that uranium very, very quickly. 180 per second, and it stacks to 50 is 44.44 seconds. We literally need more than a train a minute to keep up with this. This might be a little bit overkill. Possibly. Uh, how fast is this one? Mm, it's about half as quick. Okay. I might just grab a little bit more. Actually, are we getting close to this doubling already? No, not really. Might just grab a little bit more 235 to get this thing going. Actually, give me all of it that I can carry. I wonder what my bot's just built over there. Wait, where am I going? Cool. Also, I'm realizing... This entire row is going to have to be saturated before... before this one gets in. And even then it's going to be outputting its overflow. I think I should probably have... I 
Should probably have the uranium come back here. How should I shape the belt for that? We'll do a priority split. Yeah. Oops. Okay, so until CoverX is going full speed, uh, I guess we're not outputting the 235 down here. That makes sense. I could definitely speed this up a bit more. even distribute, but uh, this... Oh, there we go. Probably would have been fine to use even distribution. Okay, so that is 2.5 uranium-235 per second. Fantastic. I could probably put more efficiencies here since realistically we're not producing uranium ore fast enough to keep up with this thing. And we could always just uh, swap out the uh, modules. Uh, if we ever want to increase our throughput here. Also, I'm really thinking that a wide area beacon is just overkill for this. 10 megawatts minimum consumption when it's going to be idle most of the time. Uh, so why don't we just put four of these here? And then we'll put a regular beacon over here as well. beacons anymore? I guess not. Okay. One of uranium won't reach pickup station due to belt mistake. One of uranium won't reach pickup station. Uh, Talon Grandmaster. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see. One of uranium won't reach pickup station. Won't reach pickup 
station. Oh. Is that it? Yeah, come to think of it, I should have expected to see... 238 down here by now. That's fine. Alright, let's get some speed modules in here. And that'll do just fine. How long till we actually get... Oh! Wait, no. I was gonna say how long until we get the 235 flowing down here. And the answer is a bit longer than that. Name in base? No worries. Uh, I'm thinking I could probably split that actually, since all of these are now going full speed and maintaining themselves. Why is this one stopped? Oh, because it's outputting way too slowly. This needs to be stack filter inserters now, actually. Wait, can we do... Let me just change this back real quick. Oh, I also forgot to get rid of these stack inserters. That's probably why. Anyway, did you want the name in base in the orbital base? In the usual spot? Okay. So, upgrade planner. That's just gonna upgrade. Whoa, okay. Can I not upgrade filter inserters to stack filters? I can. Okay, cool. Alright. That should do it. Fantastic. I don't think this one it's going to need to be a stack filter. Uh, let's do the rest of these. And that should keep the whole thing going at a decent pace. B2, no worries. Um, yeah, I think I should have kept this left-wise. Wait, that's input. There we go. How did this one stop? What? Oh, it's got input. It needs uranium-238, that's why. But... I think I got this bit of logic backwards. Okay, let's do the names. Get a quick uh, reset of my ability to think. Overclock. V E R Where have we got an R? There we go. Uh C Do we not have a C? There it is. L. L, L, L. Oh. Maybe here? Thank you for the follow, Leshy. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Shetka, good to see you again. 
Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, that's supposed to be a nine, isn't it? Uh, let's see. What should a nine look like? Probably like that. What's on the Factorio agenda today? Uh, let's see. We already got a new... Oh, it's working. Oh, this part of it is working. Uh, I'm surprised... I'm surprised we were deleting coal because we actually still need a ton of it in space. Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, let's finish the name before I get sidetracked. CK. Okay. Fantastic. Let's get our construction spiders over there. And then we need a Carenza. Might have to move the uh, substation. A E R E N Z. Do we have a Z? Yep. And A. That's actually a really good fit. A E R E N Z A. Fantastic. Beautiful. Okay, back to the mall with the spiders. Um, how much coal do we have here right now? 6.1k. Oh, I didn't account for this. Two stations at once are requesting coal. It'll sort itself out eventually. Maybe I should bump up that... Um, Provide stack threshold, though. What? Nope, 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 nope. This shouldn't be happening. I'm pretty sure. Where did you come from? Uh, you're picking up iridite from iridite core fragment processing. I think we need some storage for it. Um, let's just disable, disable this real quick. Actually, hmm. I'm just going to add some digits to this. There we go. Put that back. Now, why are we dumping iridite? Uh, could it actually be that erudite drop-off is full? It could indeed. So we need to make some storage for the exotic stuff so that it doesn't come here first. Uh, let's put that... Uh, let's put it in this old block here. Get the deconstruction spiders up here. And I kind of need to redesign this block a little bit because it's using the old uh, solar panels. But other than that, it's perfectly good. What? I did press shift click, right? Yeah. Oh, we also need to get rid of some of that straight rail. It's going to be a bit awkward. There we go. I'm not sure what the criteria is uh, where I 
mark for deconstruction one of these bits of straight rail as opposed to the other, but there's kind of an intuitive feel to it. This one. Fantastic. Get the spiders to pick up those delivery cannons. And then we can put this, uh, put this down properly. Please pick up the delivery cannons as a priority. Pretty please. There we go. Thirty steel in this thing to go. Fantastic. Now we can copy paste. And I need to change these combinators right here. Okay, so the good news is um, it was only the iridite from ore fragment processing that was being brought here, which is correct. The only trouble is... Um, I would like to have some storage for that to go into before it comes to the item destruction area. Uh, as for now, I need to get the iridite dumped into the trash and then brought back around eventually. Um, but I also need to remove it from... Oh good, these are buffer chests now. Yeah, that definitely makes it easier. This does request from buffer chest, right? Yeah, good. surprisingly easy to fix. Now, we need to change this and this and this and this. Uh, so the whole storage system here is set up so that all you have to do is put a signal on this constant combinator for the type of resource and put the volume as the stack size. And the rest sorts itself out. We set the filters on the stack filter inserters based on that. We do some math uh, to know how much erudite to request for this block. And down here, I think we're using uh, stack size, so that obviously works itself out. Let's do the other exotics. Uh, we've got iridite, pulmonite, bryonite, vulcanite, vitamelange, beryl, and nacquite. We're going to need to make another block. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, but for now, cryonite. I think that stacks to 50. And then... Where is it? Vulcanite. Most of these stack to 50. Vitamelange. 50. My inventory is very upset with me. I need to figure out somewhere else to build a storage block as well. Maybe over here. 
somewhere. Not too far away from the core fragment processing. Alright, let's get our construction spiders to finish this build. If they can. Send the deconstruction spiders back to this mall to get their inventories emptied. Uh, we kind of need to make sure these chests are emptied before the train comes as well. So I'll switch those constant combinators off. And once the block is ready, uh, we'll configure that again. Oh good, we've got something in place here to get all of the erudite back where it belongs as well. Wait, this should be... Oh, it is. Okay, good. Fantastic. Fix my inventory, please. And let's see how our... Uh, cover X is going. I know it's only tier 3 modules, but I'm actually slightly surprised at how slow it is. Of course, it's not that slow. Oh, it's actually... That's right, I had to fix this. It's actually Uranium-238. That partly we've run out of it, but mostly I didn't configure the storage for that properly. Let's go fix it. And what are our military spiders doing? They're on their way back. How, much, uh, how many rockets do you have? Quite a few might get you to visit some more biter nests. And I should check on Rose as well. We need to keep clearing the biters there also. And Rose is much, much easier to clear because we've got spiders with rockets and only little baby expansion nests. Okay, I'll leave them there for a moment. Uh, Rose. Let's get a remote. Wait, do these guys have 800? No, they don't. Wait, why have we got 817 rockets here? Did they step outside of... They're in range for the logistic bots. This one has 775... Okay. Some of the spiders have their rockets not in the trunk. Uh, not not in the the rockets, but in the trunk instead. But it looks like I can actually fix that remotely. Although it's a little bit fiddly. But yeah, it looks like they've actually got 800 each now. Uh, except for this one. Even though it's in the logistic network and we've got 850... 
two rockets here. Uh, that one's not carrying any rockets, but I don't think I'll bother to fix it. They won't fire rockets that are in their trunk, will they? Like, they won't rearrange it. We have a ridiculous amount of rockets, considering the threat that we're up against here, though. I can probably get the spiders on this planet. Uh, possibly to clear out the entire planet in one trip at this point. And they can literally just walk straight in uh, to the binder nests. Don't see anything over there just yet. That's going to get them stuck. I'll check on them in a little bit. Oh. Oh, Coverix is going again because we've got 238. Anyway, we need to fix these, uh, logics. Um. I think. So we need it, we need to allow it to accumulate, uh, 238, but leave some room. It's this one in particular. Okay, this one's less than 100. I don't think we have to look forward with these inserters. I think we just have to not overfill... Uh, the ones that the filter inserters point at. So this one is already set correctly. Um, I'll actually set this to like less than a thousand. And then this one be less than 2,000. This one, this one, this one, this one. And I don't think it matters at all if uh, if the other ones get full. Let's fix it over this side as well. Robots go. Wait. Why are my bots not? Where are my bots? Uh-oh. Okay, here they come. I don't know what they were doing, but... They are drifting back to me now. Alright, let's see how this is going now. Ideally, I would like... Hmm. I would like this inserter... To make sure there's a few 238 in this chest, but also not overfill this chest. I don't know if there's a way to do that without way more combinators than I would like. Hmm. We need two conditions. I think that means we need 
like a pair of decider combinators. If uranium-235, uh, 238, greater than x, if uran uranium-238 less than x, if tick equals 2, the only way I can think of to smuggle two conditions in without doing something like that is with the logistic network, as well as a wire. But... That's obviously not happening this time. It might be better if we set the limit on these chests. Well, we're not limiting this one at all, so that's going to be full. Which means if we run out of 238 here, this is going to be the only machine doing cover X for a while. But ultimately, these chests will fill up. Ragathian, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Johan Anderson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Interesting, you got some smart combinators at a lot of places, but you don't have it for cover X thing. Um, I'm just trying a, a different idea for cover X. I've, um, I have previously made a CoverX build which counts how much U-235 you put in each machine so that you don't get 82 of it piling up here while other machines are going hungry. I've never come up with a system that does that, uh, that accelerates faster than normal, but also goes full speed perfectly. Well, I have, but I think I lost it, actually. But also, by the time you've got enough 235 to just get everything going full speed, you may as well use a simpler design. You can do it with one condition. Simply swing the inserter on the left if the chest on the right has less than 10 items. If the chest on the right has less than X items, that's what we're doing here. If we also do that here, we'll put 238 into this chest and then this one will take it. Reducing the limit for each chest, um, we'll definitely have this thing saturate with 238 quicker. But we'll have a lot less of it for storage in case we don't get any for a while. I'm guessing we haven't made any... Uh, we've made like a handful of uranium fuel cells here, but I think that was from when I turned off this output priority for a while. I want the whole thing to saturate uh, before this thing makes uh, nuclear fuel or uranium fuel cells. Okay. Yeah, it's all 238 at the moment. Is this train coming? Oh, these are the very slow loading trains. And I think we limited this to two. Let's bump it up one. Yeah, this is rescuing the uranium from this block with the very slow inserters that I set up. I still don't understand what's going on with coal. Oh, we're doing more liquefaction. I wonder why. So how is it... 
how is it our coal storage filled up? And then we brought it over here. Wait. Our coal storage isn't even remotely full right now. Oh no. What's this? Yeah, this happens occasionally. Um, there's... Some coal got used to make grenades or something here. And we had... Um, a little bit more coal before this train arrived. I'll just move that one on. Anyway. Let's get you... I think they've all got enough 235 now, actually. Yeah, all of them. It's just 238 that they're waiting on. Okay. And there should be a third... There should be a third train on its way here by now, but it hasn't been scheduled yet. How full is this? Less than half. About half. Okay. It'll sort itself out anyway. What else were we doing? Let's check on Rose. The spiders still have a way to go. Uh, I can't remember which military spiders. It was definitely the ones on Rose. That we need to keep from getting stuck in a corner at, their en at the end of their pathing. Where did I send them to? Oh, here they are. That is going to take a little while. Still hasn't scheduled a third train. It should be... There should be multiple places that it can get. Here's one of them. Uh, although the stack size might be set a bit higher. 10,000 actually. But there should be places like this that are full of uranium. I don't know why a third train hasn't been scheduled here yet. Oh, best to just ignore it for a while. Now then. I think there was an outpost, uh, probably the one for burial core fragments. Uh, that I haven't checked on in a while. That's probably got a problem. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Morpheus landing pad. Um, I need... I'm, I'm removing that from the, uh, the old main bus base. And I need to set that up here. So we'll make this one Morpheus. Planet. Morpheus. And. Morpheus. Morpheus landing pad. Morpheus pad. And assuming. Uh, assuming we've got everything that we need to send over there. That should be all it takes, actually. So let's check. Morpheus is requesting all the same stuff uh, that we're sending automatically to uh, Varus, I believe. So I think I've got all of those logistic chains set up already. And this thing will literally load itself. And we just have to set it to uh, launch on green signal, actually. 
which is a little bit of a custom job. I've done the same thing over here. Since most of these are set up just to go launch on cargo full. Red wire from these two. Red wire goes here. Let me just double check that. Yes. So what we're checking is there's nothing left that we're trying to load um, into the rocket. If there's no requests set on this red wire right here, that is true. I'll put tick. Um, and on the other end, we output a tick if any of the, if we're sending a signal, uh, that we need to load things. Um, I'm just going to piggyback off of this inserter. We're not actually going to set a mode of operation on it. It's purely a connection for the wire. And launch on green signal. Pretty sure that's it. Fantastic. We probably need some kind of... Uh, we probably need something to load up more than 48 cargo packed cargo rocket sections uh, in this entire storage block might be a good idea so I think what we'll do is purple chest this one and we'll limit packed cargo rocket sections uh, let's say 192. Uh, that'll be four chests, or is it eight chests? Should be fine. What are we trying to load from Morpheus? Just packed cargo rocket sections. We've already got the fuel and the capsule here. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Cool. I should probably check my other outposts. So, Vulcanite is flowing. Fantastic. Uh, next is Lothar. Uh, I've actually got a finite setup here where we're counting on this uranium mine, but it's obviously got quite a way to go. I placed this umbrella, but I think it's just not in... the spider's got it. Let's go place it. Um, but yeah, everything seems to be working here. Fantastic. Next is Morpheus. We just checked that one. Rose, we just fixed. Go place that. Judging by the number of delivery cannon shells flying through the air, I think this is going just fine. Hagen? He has no power. At all. Uh, that's a bit concerning. Uh, it is night time and we are running off of solar. 
but yeah, we knew the way we set this up before that it would have a lifespan. Definitely need to go there to fix things a bit. Okay. Uh, Fornax is still sending us Iridite Core Fragments and Iridite. Fantastic. Taser is sending us Holonite. Looking good. Now this, I'm pretty sure now this is okay. Varus. Varus is still bottlenecked on liquid rocket fuel, actually. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Oh, that's right. We were going to do a train to get more crude oil here. Okay. Uh, does the spider have the train? It has the fluid wagons. Okay. Um... Let's get you to deconstruct this real quick, and then you've got your locomotives. And we'll put those here, the wood wagon goes here. Uh, we do have a robo network with rocket fuel, so let's be lazy and put that here. We also need it over this way. Is that in the network? Fantastic. Okay, rocket fuel. That should get done automatically. And we just need to name our station. Pick up drop off, uh, full cargo, empty cargo, and did we set this one up properly as well? Did you already get all your rocket fuel? Close enough. Okay. Spider goes here. It would probably help if we had our storage tanks here. Meanwhile, we've been consuming 10 megawatts all the time uh, without pumping any crude oil. Away we go. Please tell me the spider does have... Storage tanks, fantastic. Beautiful. I was going to say why is it taking so long to pump, but it's because we're bottlenecked on the actual pump jacks. That said, it is filling up pretty quickly. Uh, we could also get these pump jacks to contribute as well. What's our rate here? 1.5k. Uh, given that, I think we're going to be bottlenecking through the... Uh, through the pipe. Let's try and fix that a little bit. Connect that up on the other end. That 
should help. Okay. So that is... Call it about a thousand. Uh, that should be way more than enough to stay positive with crude oil. And then we've also got Moors sending us back. Uh, oh, how'd this get damaged? Curious. Uh, we've got Moors sending us back. Uh, crude oil core fragments. Don't tell me I still haven't gotten around to um, making a block for that. No, I did. Okay. Poor fragment crude oil. It's actually completely backed up. Okay. Uh, we're getting stone, and we're getting poor fragments. The problem is crude oil itself. I set the provide priority to 100. Apparently that wasn't high enough to make sure... to make sure we'd be emptying this. I'm actually more interested in the physical items here, so I might actually just empty the crude oil there for now. Uh, because that is a not insignificant amount of stone and core fragments that we get out of this. And I'm also much more strongly considering taking the time to make some, uh, to, to barrel some fluids to send it to space. Because, uh, because it's more stack efficient for the cargo rockets, we've been doing everything with coal liquefaction up here. But we've got tons and tons of fluid, uh, on Nalvis at the moment. What is this doing? Oh, it's trying to leave. Is it not? It's going to... Heavy oil... It's going to this station. It's stopped at this station. It's trying to pick up heavy oil. So this doesn't seem to be working. This is outputting heavy oil. Okay. If heavy oil equals zero, input it. If heavy... Well, there's your problem. If heavy oil not equal to zero, put it into the train. I wonder where it's going. It is going to make some thermofluid. Okay. Uh, but other than that little typo, our fluid pickup and drop-off station appears to be a success. The pumps were backwards. Yeah, uh, half of the pumps face in and the other half face out. One was not equal, the other was equal. Yeah, uh, the problem was that earlier... Wait, what? Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Uh, not equal is output. Equal is input. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Alright. So apart from little typos like that, um, our both drop-off and pick-up fluid station appears to be a success. Or am I dumb? Nope. Alright, so that's going to fill up with crude oil. Yeah, so if it is a pick-up, 
the logistic train stop output is going to have a signal for whichever fluid it is. And if it's a drop-off, it's not going to. Um, so if heavy oil equals zero, if heavy oil not equal to zero... Fantastic. It does take longer than I thought it would to load with just one pump here. Oh, it's just because the, this one is emptier than this one. Cool. Let's just double check over here now. Equal, not equal, equal, not equal, equal, not equal. Fantastic. And I guess we can move on, as soon as we confirm this works. Nice. Very good. Okay, so what's next? That's right, we needed to make um, storage blocks for all of those resources. Did I turn this station off for now? I should have. This combinator right here, that is. I'll turn it back on when we're ready. Uh, construction spiders. Looks like they've finished here, except for the solar panels and stuff, which we don't have or care about right now. Uh, we'll do another storage over here, I think. This will have our... I think I should move the erudite storage if it's not too late. Yeah, I switched this off, that's good. We'll have the erudite storage directly next to uh, the drop-off for Erudite. I also need to change this, I think. Might be a little bit of a problem. But... Well... Uh... Hmm... That, that is a problem, actually. I think we'll... 45k uranium. I think we'll just put it up here. Or maybe down here. I would need to use some landfill. For the roundabout. Oh, this would be in the way, still. Okay, here it is. Cannon delivery automation. Indeed. Uh, Cipollino. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's get our construction spiders over here. Um, both of these are about the same distance from cryonite rods. Wait, no, not cryonite rods, just cryonite itself. Uh, cryonite is actually... Shockingly enough, cryonite is completely backed up here. Even though our... Uh, pagan, our cryonite planet, isn't working at night at all. Last we checked. Uh, but yeah, I think we will put... Uh, cryonite storage here. I'll turn that one on. Uh, we need some... Islands. And 
and maybe one in the middle somewhere. Oh, I also do have medium poles. Never mind. Well, we should get rid of the old power stuff anyway. Now then. Uh, we need more chests and stuff. Let's send construction spiders back to the mall. Uh, we want to store erudite here, I think. Actually, what would be closest? This is the erudite drop-off, and this can be erudite. Stack size is 40. So we'll turn that one on. Actually, not until it's built. So we've got cryonite, erudite, uh, holmanite. It's going to be about the same distance for most of these. Let's go Vulcanite here. Vitamalange. Over here. Barrel stacks to a hundred. Uh, I think we're ready to switch this one on. Fantastic. And we need the construction spiders resupplied. Oh, let's check on our military on the rows. There they are. Okay, cool. Perfect. How many rockets do you have right now? Front one has zero. Some of the ones at the back have over 700. So I think we're okay. Let's pay all of these neighbors a visit. So many of them, but they're so easy to clear individually. Where are we going? Oh, there's a little bit over here. Probably just biters, not actual nests. Okay, I th think that's enough clicking for now. We'll get them to resupply after this one. Careful not to leave them in front of a giant building, otherwise it's impossible to click on them again. And I don't know why we don't have any cryonite here yet. Um, where's this train going? To storage. Okay. Construction spiders. What's going on here? It's cold again. Uh, 
how much uranium do we have here? 69,000. So we're going to start deleting it soon. Um, except I turned all of that off until we get the storage in place. Okay. So let's see. Bryonite. Vulcanite. Vita Melange and Barrel. And that just leaves uh, Iridite. Why is this not switched on? There we go. I'm sure by the time a train is scheduled, we'll have built it. Now let's add that to the map. Iridite goes here. Uh, this one won't be Vulcanite. This one won't be Iridite. This one won't be Iridite. What have we got left? We've already got uranium storage in all of these. Uh, Holmanite and... Naquitite. Okay. Yeah, we'll put that here. And Naquitite. Can go here. Stack size for Naquitite is 10, I believe. And Fulminite is 50. Fantastic. Alright, looks like that is ready to be working. Why have we got no power? Because I don't have medium poles, because I turned off my logistics again. Whoops. Keep pressing the wrong thing here. Here we go. Substation panels. I'll just double check we're not running any circuit wire across the medium poles or anything. Doesn't look like it. I don't know that there's any signals here. Uh, that need to go a long way. So I think we can probably remove the old connections. See if everything stays connected here. Seems good. And I'm pretty sure we can do the same thing over here. Uh, once we actually get over there. Fantastic. I need to remove all of the solar panels and accumulators from these builds as well. It's all out of date. What's this other stuff? Wooden chests. Uh, okay. It's going to be more trouble to get those than uh, steel chests. How many can I make right here? Zero. Um, do we have any wood here? We have 38,000. I think we can manage... What is it? 24 times 8? I think we can manage a few wooden chests. Say 500. And that'll start once this thing ticks over 1800. Let's 
get ready to go pick them up. And I should probably figure out a layout for flat solar panels here. Oh, that's almost perfect. We don't have room for accumulators in there, but maybe somewhere else. Okay, that's too good. Then, in the middle, we might remove the radar, we don't really need that, since we have the nav set. Put this in the middle, it's not a very good fit at all. Maybe just on the side of the train stations. Okay, that's looking better. And we get over here as well. What's our ratio, I wonder? Uh, let's copy, flip. That doesn't go there. to do. And then this is all messed up. Um, we figured out a good ratio for the tier ones was uh, one to six. Uh, this, the tier two doubles the um, flat solar panel effectiveness from 400 kilowatts to 800 and ignoring the max input the max input is doubled anyway but the energy capacity is multiplied by 10 it's really just the energy capacity we're looking for so Times two, times ten. Um, we need like instead of one to six, we need a fifth as many accumulators, proportionally. I think. So that would be. Um, About, about 10 accumulators instead of 48. So it's actually much closer to a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, slightly more accumulators than flat solar panels. What do we got here? 138 to 123 that's not that bad actually if we put this here it 
That's almost going to be spot on. That's actually probably pretty close to perfect. Let's grab just the... Why do we have a crafting combinator setting in here? It's a mystery. Anyway, we only want the accumulators and solar panels. Flip that around. Add that over here as well. And over here, we've got some straight rail in the way this time. Not to mention all of the old uh, power poles and stuff. I think I'll just leave that one for now. And of course we need to actually get those Holmium accumulators down to Nalvis. How are they doing? Uh, 10,000. That is... It's 25,000 that would fit in a rocket that would automatically send back to Nalvis. That's not that bad. It is taking its sweet time overall. We bottlenecked on heavy girders, or... I think this is actually bottlenecked on the bots bringing the stuff in here. I could change the multiply results by input count setting, but then we're going to overfill the chest. Um, I really wish... I, I could do something about this, but it's going to be sort of approximate and not account for stack sizes. But I wish we could... Multiply results by input count with a hard limit of, I don't know, five stacks per resource or something uh, built into the recipe combinator. Um, but wow, I didn't realize just how badly this was the bottleneck for now. We really have caught up with girders. That's actually fantastic. Um, I wonder if... Where is it? Here. We could probably... We could probably add one combinator here, but... How do we hard limit things? I want to pass through whatever number this is, but if it's greater than 10, knock it down to 10. I don't think we can do that with one combinator. Um, it would be something like each greater than 10 output. The far easier thing to do would be to just set everything to 10. So it's as if we're trying to to make 10 of whatever recipe. I don't know. I'll think about it. In any case, we've now got 1.13 whole meme accumulators per second being made up here. Uh... So that's going to be 15,000 seconds, approximately, 250 minutes, 4 hours and uh, probably like 4 hours, 10 minutes. That was an approximation to begin with. In a bit over 4 hours, we would automatically be getting a delivery of 25,000 volume accumulators to Nalvis. But the only reason not... Uh, the only reason to wait for that is a uh, cargo rocket section efficiency, not to mention cool. 
uh, we're really not having any trouble with those resources in particular. So I think we'll just launch that now. And... Chromium accumulators... Uh, here it is. I forgot to add a icon here. But we did set up station and everything. This one's still unused. And here we go. 10,000 all meme accumulators. Fantastic. Those will be coming back to the mall. And we'll be able to start laying those out properly. Okay, have I switched these on? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, these ones are missing some power. Let's fix that. And I'll pay a visit to this one myself. That should fix our power issue over here. Fantastic. So just to clarify, we are request stack threshold 160, that's a long train. Encoded network ID 1, uh, negative 576,000 cryonite means we should be picking up this cryonite from here. Uh, we are, but it's going somewhere else. What's this train doing? It seems to be stuck. Oh, there's no signals here. And this train also seems to be confused. I have to figure out what went wrong here. I think I just figured out what went wrong here. Fantastic. Uh, this one... Oh, wait, wait, go back, go back. Oh, this is just stone. This doesn't need to prevent the inserters from sticking out. That's fine. Alright, so we're going to put our... Signals here. Deconstruct these inserters and then put them back. So they're not going to be sticking out like that again. We've bumped up the request stack threshold, uh, provide stack threshold to make sure there's more than enough uh, of whichever resource before the train comes to pick it up with the precise loader. I should double check all of these are the same. 200. Uh, 200, 200. I guess the cryonite one was the first one of these we made. This one only outputs stone, don't need to worry about that. We're already full on crude oil here again. If I find a single crude oil drop off that's not completely full, Hmm. Like this one. Oh, it's got a train coming. There's too many of these trains and it's hard to tell which one's which. But didn't... Didn't I set the priority on this thing ridiculously high? Literally 10,000. And we're not picking up this crude oil. That's 
a little bit annoying. Hmm. All the more reason uh, that I'd like to send fluid into space with barrels now. Okay, cryonite is flowing. We've got lots of it here. We should soon see a train delivering cryonite up here. Let's see. Encoded network ID 1. No encoded network ID. Maybe I should play with the setting for LTN uh, that I haven't touched before. Update frequency or updates per tick. How fast stops and requests are updated. Higher numbers improve performance by spreading out updates over more ticks. It's set to 2. Limits the number of stops and requests updated per tick. Lower numbers increase performance. Ignored if update frequency is greater than 1, which it is. Higher numbers improve performance but spread out updates. Hmm. When greater than 1 forces updates per tick to 1. We'll see what this does to our UPS. Currently we're sitting at almost 40. Oh, it actually got up to 40. I'm getting a little bit tired of LTN taking so long to schedule trains. It seems to be getting to the point where it's actually affecting things. Uh, so we'll set updates per tick to 2. Let's see what happens. Uh, that seems to be negligible, but we probably need to give it a moment. Um, to find out if it's really going to affect anything. It seems to be completely negligible so far. And we've just doubled... If I if I understand the setting, if it, if I'm reading it right, and if it's described well, uh, we've literally doubled how quickly LTN is going to get around to scheduling trains. How big is your iron, copper, steel smelting area? Uh, let's see. We've got six blocks here. Uh, twenty blocks here. And three blocks here, but the three blocks are the newer design. Uh, we can fit 144 um, smelters here with bots. 403 iron plate per second. Uh, these are all omni smelters, so they can switch to whatever resource we need at the time. Quadruple, I think? Maybe. Okay, oh, I wanted to see where this is going. Um, okay, so it's dropping off Bryanite. Uh, obviously this is going to be a higher priority than our storage. So until this is full, we're not dropping Bryanite off at the storage area. I just want to see one of these dropped off so I can confirm that it's working. Iridite in particular, since that was the entire reason that we made this thing in the short term. Request priority negative 100 and encoded network ID 1. This one is encoded network ID 1. And wait. If this is encoded network ID 1... Uh, did I do that backwards or something? 
The storage has always been encoded network ID 1. Um, and this stuff is... No encoded network ID, that's surprising. Oh, that's right, it's encoded network ID 2 if we don't want a resource to go somewhere in particular. So the storage is basically for only the stuff that can be destroyed, I guess. And if we've got a station outputting copper ore that's completely full, we're just using this as storage. Why do you have gears? And why do you have no path? Wait, what? This locomotive is backwards. Oh no. Um, I hope that didn't happen anywhere else. What a chance encounter. Wait, if gears are messed up... Gears are not messed up. I wonder how that happened. Let's send our construction spiders back home for now. How much LTN stations do you have total? I... I wonder? Uh... LTN logistic logistic train stop. Uh, as far as we can see right now, over one thousand on Nalvis. That is a higher number than I was expecting, to be honest. You can see that in the LTN manager, uh, the mod. I tried installing it, I had some problems, if I recall correctly. Um, so let me just check. Cryonite, for example, from here, has no encoded network ID, so this can go to storage. And same with this one. And Iridium. This one's not going to go to storage, but it's not going to go to trash either. But the Iridium, the Iridite that we get from core fragment processing, doesn't have an encoded network ID. So it's going to go first to here to get actually processed. Second to here, which has a negative priority, but nowhere near as low as over here. Negative a million priority. That should be fine. Okay. It would be better if we saw Iridite stored here before pulling the trigger on that, but I'm pretty sure this is already set up correctly. Pr pretty sure. I should probably make this erudite just a slightly higher priority to pick up, because if that stops, our erudite core fragments would stop as well. Not sure if that matters, actually. Meanwhile, on Varus. We're still very much bottlenecked on rocket fuel. Um, I think we need wide area beacons for this stuff. Uh, we'll just check how quickly... We're probably very net positive on crude oil even accounting for the pipes slowing things down. 
So let's just see if we can fit some wide area beacons down here. There's just barely not a place to put it. But I think if we change these pipes a little bit, we can make it happen. Probably swap out one of the S-bends for the uh, petroleum. And connect it across like this. And then wide area bacon. Uh, let's see. Here. Yeah, right about here, I think. The starters. Get rid of the old beacons. I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna just mark them all for deconstruction now. And hope and bet that we can get a really good layout for the wide area beacons here. This one is touching all the way to this column. If we put it here, I think we've actually got a perfect repeatable pattern here. That's actually so lucky. Oh, except... Except now the liquid rocket fuel... Fuel refinery isn't fast enough. It's not getting touched by a beacon. We'll cross that bridge in a moment. We're still going to put wide area beacons here. Okay, so we're literally... Oh. I thought the wide area beacons were touching these ones down here as well. All the more justification to simply... Put this here. And... We're going to need to move that roboport. one. And last but not least. That's going to use considerably more power, but we need that erudite. We're going to make another nuclear plant here anyway. Um, do we already have... yeah. We've already got the robot network reaching all of this stuff. Just got to be extremely careful about placing this. Much easier to see on the map, actually. Most importantly, this roboport goes here, and it's actually touched by this substation already. So that'll be what we need. Uh, the logistic network range that we need to finish most of the landfill. I still need to update um, this blueprint. Let's see, there's nothing unique in this area, is there? I don't think so.
actually, I'll just copy this part. Oh, right. Uh, select new contents. It's looking pretty normal. There's nothing out here, is there? Doesn't look like it. Although I'm not liking the way that wire connects on one side but not the other. Let's fix it. Okay. I'm actually just going to make a copy of this, just in case. Select new contents. And... Save. The only thing we've added here is this green wire connection so that we can tell how much steam is in one of the uh, storage tanks. Okay. So we'll just wait for the bots to fill out the landfill. Come back here and stamp this blueprint into place once again. Um, I might just remove the inserters until we're ready. Okay. And we already sped all of this up. Power is surprisingly good still, but that's partly because the rocket's already full, so we're not mining or anything. Are the inserters keeping up? What's this train? Oh, right. Still has the schedule. Fantastic. Uh, what were we looking at here? Oh yeah, we need to see if the inserters can keep up with all of this. Or the belts for that matter. Theoretically, this is 42 solid fuel per second. Which is obviously a bit much for a red belt. Um, oh, it's actually like half a, half red, half blue. Okay. Yeah, I think the first time I made this I had run out of belt on a planet. Uh, this is slightly more than half a belt here. So I think... We kind of do... Oh, we need to make the rocket fuel as well. Let's see. 34 solid fuel per second. Okay, so we're bottlenecked on this thing. Also, this is... Most of the time it's just going to be the light oil. So 25.2 per second. This needs 34. This seems to be backed up, though. What's the easiest way to use both sides of the belt here? You're also only using one side of the belt. You double your throughput, indeed. We're also, also only going to have the one stack inserter. Which I think is already going full speed. Um... We could maybe move this inserter up to move this pipe, have two stack inserters for input. And then we need a regular pipe here. And we need that to reach somehow. Hmm. We could make this part an underground. Move this up here. 
Actually, no, that won't help. You would need an underground here. We'd be able to fit exactly the same number of stack inserters. Um, let's just remove this for now. Since... Yeah, I think what we're going to have to do is... That's actually surprisingly easy. Then we have that there. Now we just need to make sure the belts and inserters can keep up. This one cannot. This needs to be a stack. Okay. So, stack, stack, stack. Fast is fine for this one, looks like. Oh wait, no it's not. Theoretically. Overall, we're not going to have petroleum that quickly. Like, it's going to bottle, uh, these two machines are going to bottleneck, but I think I would rather... Have it go as fast as possible the entire time. Um, so I'll put that there. We'll have a splitter. This, I think. That might be super overkill. <laughs> Maybe. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is. IT hacks and chat. Hello, Hughes Mike. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's probably the most complicated way you could do it, but it works. Uh, the belt, or I'm pretty sure you don't need the pipe. If anything, this is just to prove that we can. Okay, this one is. Uh, it actually needs 2.4 inserters for solid fuel, and that's if it was direct inserting. We need to change the shape of this to make it work. If I move this two tiles down, we can have... Oh, no. First two splitters don't do anything because everything is still on the right side. Oh. True. Does it matter? Probably not. Anyway, um, maybe it's okay to be bottlenecked on just two stack inserters for each of these. Well, I mean, this is the bottleneck for all of our iridite, which has been, we're probably okay for iridite now, but it's been one of our problem resources for a long time, so I'd really like to improve it. I'd also really like to come up with a layout for this that we can use on other planets that is very, very good. Hmm. Yeah, I 
I think for now we'll just improve it so that we can fit the two stack inserters. Um, this one is bottlenecking on. That's because these are consuming slow. How fast would... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... I can't believe how big this build is getting. How fast would 8 of these go in theory? Uh, 1.68k per second. So... That would still be... That would still be seven and a half minutes for a rocket launch. Even if we weren't bottlenecking on that. You could probably reconfigure the setup to use direct insertion. Maybe. It's actually a really good idea. Except we've only got... Can we get the direct insertion to happen with two of these? Right next to each other. Wait, we could actually move this down a tile, but again, that doesn't help. Unless... If we put this here, actually... Um... That kind of solves some problems. So we can push this down. Oh. Well, we'll have to change this a little bit, but that's okay. Push this down. Um, we can get rid of... Well, that, that'll actually stay there. Um, we'll have our passives there. And then... We can have three stack inserters picking that up. Uh, so we got one, two, three, four, five. That's kind of awkward. For the sides of the belt. Wait, surely... Well, it's not going to be five of these going full speed overall, all the time. Let's treat these two as one. And this one will go here. And then we'll merge these two. Like this, I suppose. That should use both sides of the belt pretty evenly. I think the inserters are keeping up. Oh, the output. Okay, cool. We need to update all of this now. Might be easier to just... What did I just... Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Get rid of all the belts and inserters. Um, we may have a few more pylon substations than we need here. I think I copied them a bit much. Okay, so we're going to copy that over here. I 
love Piccadillies. It's a very good mod. Split these one by one so that the fluid gets pushed back into the network, into the pipes. Just three to go. It's not going anywhere. Fantastic. Paste the rest. And this one. We do it. At a glance, that is looking pretty good. Uh, we need this connected. And the fact that the one on the end just started firing up suggests it's probably all working. Come to think of it, we're probably bottlenecking on pipe output at this point. Yeah, we're getting like a thousand a second. Theoretically, 1.6k per second. I have no doubt whatsoever that we're bottlenecking on pipes. I think what we'll do is pump spam. Pump goes here. You would think there'd be a hard bottleneck on how much you can fit through one pipe, but actually the number of pipes that you have between pumps matters. Uh, we'll see about that one. Not to mention this one. Hopefully that gets us up to our 1.6k. Kind of excited to see how the rate of liquid fuel input compares to how quickly we're filling this with iridite and pore fragments. 
I'm pretty sure we're still going to be bottlenecking on liquid rocket fuel. Pumping speed 1714 per second. That is better than I was expecting. That is much better than I was expecting. That's more than we're making. Okay. Cargo got a bit of a head start, but I, I don't doubt that cargo is going to fill up first. But even so, that is a pretty dramatic shift in our bottleneck here, which is just fueling the rocket. So we're going to be getting a lot more iridite now. Fantastic. Speaking of fantastic, let's... Uh, Why is this? Oh, I see. The new version that I made uses regular pipe because we don't have any space pipe here. Not that this is a context where the number of pipe units is going to make much of a difference. Which one's the new version? This one? Yeah, this one. Fantastic. So when we check back here again, most of our uh, nuclear plant should be finished. Ian Nua, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Isn't the drop-off in liquids per segment a geometric recession? I understand those words, but not what they mean when they go together. Um, you the, f the more regular pipes you have in front of a pump, uh, for example, the slower it gets. We actually did some science experiments for this. I don't know if we still have... Here it is. Although I kind of messed up the, um, the display here. Uh, yeah, we did some experiments with different amounts of pipe between the pump and uh, the storage tank on the right. The blue lights are indicating how full the storage tank is. Um, and we have a timer here, basically, that stops as soon as we get 24,500 uh, water in this tank. So we were actually able to measure exactly how many ticks it takes to transfer the water from here to here, um, depending on what kind of pipe layout you've got. Nataj Naku, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, I meant to say Ken Ken. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing as well. Also, and by cow. Shift L on inserter. Shift L on inserter. Oh, wait, that's the logistic network. That's just L. To, uh, to BD, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Then they do a full 12k. Oh, if you've got like a storage tank, pump storage tank, yeah. They can have really high throughput if you do it right. Yep. Absolutely. The shift L thing is Crestorio. I see. Icarus, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And thanks for pointing that out. Alright, let's head back to the mall. Have we got anything? Oh, here it is. Iridite is in storage. Fantastic. I don't 
Oh, I do know why, actually. This is uh, just a short train that dropped this off here. Yeah, that'll be fine. And we've got a balanced loader for the last uh, lot of chests here. Or balanced unloader. And then it all merges for uh, to be put in these wooden chests evenly for pickup. I need to pick up uh, wooden chests, speaking of which. They should be in the mall at this point. Yep, fantastic. Putting a storage tank in between lowers throughput, that's unfortunate. Why do you use wooden chests instead of metal ones with a lim limited inventory space? Uh, honestly, I just, I made this storage area quite a while ago. Uh, and I don't feel like, uh, I guess it would have been quicker to just use an upgrade planner. But we're literally just doing seven stacks for each chest here. People usually measure it wrong when testing. Since you need a source that's full during the entire test and a destination that's empty during the entire test. That's not quite how we tested it, but yeah, if you want the theoretical max throughput, um, absolutely, that would be the way to go. Back pressure exists. Ragathian, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, but yeah, what we're doing here is, let's see, is this thing on? It is. If water, I'll put red signal, red signal. I think we automated it so that this would turn off the pump, uh, but I just can't remember exactly how this works. Uh, let's see. Green signal on. Oh, that's right. I'm supposed to turn this off. And then we do this. And it'll automatically reset the... Uh, the, the tick count. Once I turn the pump back on with the constant combinator. So, for example... Uh into one pipe, into storage tank, once this is full, is going to take... about... less than 600... no, more than 600 ticks, I think. Because it's getting slower. One thousand and a bit more still. Uh, one thousand two hundred and twenty six ticks to fill the entire thing, or to very nearly fill the entire thing because we set the target a little bit lower just because it slows down so much at the end. Always want pumps on your tanks. Uh, let's go place these chests. Uranium core fragment processing is happening, so is Holmanite. Uh, Cryonite is taking a bit of a break, but we still have lots of it, I think. Wait, did it... Did Cryonite get stored here? It did. Fantastic. Also got zero Holmanite. Obviously zero Nacquite. Uh, we don't have... Oh, this one isn't in use yet. But we do have some Iridite stored. Fantastic. Uh, 
I think we already did it, but I'll just double check because we can now switch this block on if we haven't already. It's looking good. Okay. I'm really surprised by how much, how often I'm seeing trains picking stuff up here. Um, we've got a hundred thousand uranium here, but we haven't been. Oh, did I did I disable this? Yeah, I did. Okay. So, I think. We're actually approaching a hundred thousand. Um, I think what we'll do is if we reach a hundred K, we'll start destroying uh, uranium. We actually did already. And the reason we've got a latch set up here is because once they start putting it in here, it drops below 100k, so we don't want that switching off immediately. Oh. Now then, on to the next one. Now that we've got our high-tech wooden chests. What is this train doing? Uh, it's doing traffic. Oh, this should not be a regular signal. And let's check this side as well. This is probably the same error where we copy-pasted before. Nope, this one's looking fine, actually. No, it's this side. And that is a chain signal as well. Let's get our construction spiders to patch this one. A Rorosaur. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so now that we've got all of those resources flowing, uh, we can probably play around in space a bit more. Especially since we've got Holmium accumulators getting spammed at full speed here. Uh... We launched a rocket earlier, we've already got 2.3k. This is already almost 10% full. That's what we like to see. Oh, let's check on our military spiders. I left them parked somewhere, that's not good. Don't do that. I should check on the ones on rows as well. They are chillin' in the main base. Haven't seen someone do a high-density orbital rail block yet. Well, here it is. Uh, it's the exact same rail layout that I'm using on Nalvis. Uh Basically, we have a left-hand drive on the straight rail, and on the roundabout, a train can go clockwise or counterclockwise. I probably could have squeezed these crisscross things uh, closer to the roundabout, but there's room exactly for a locomotive, four cargo wagon locomotive train to stop in these uh, long areas. And then for pick up and drop off, usually uh, we just have some rail going from this roundabout to the other roundabout. Um, it's very, very easy, especially with trains that go in both directions, um, with this setup to have rail coming off somewhere and do a station. 
And with LTN, we can have pretty much as many different drop-offs. Uh, if we use, like, active provider chests, we can literally have as many different drop-offs at the one train station as we like. Of course, if we use belts, there's some physical limitations. Uh, I think I know what happened here. The, despite the balanced loader that we've got, the uh, broad biological catalog was very slightly not perfectly balanced here. So we've got two broad biological catalogs missing in the last cargo wagon. I'll just send it to its destination. Uh, we've actually got a... We finished 660 uh, Bioscience Pack 2s before I noticed. Fantastic. Uh, that actually means it's time for queuing up some research. We do have those being delivered here, right? Yep, they're already here. Fantastic. Wait. Is that... Biological Science Pack 2. We've got 1.8k already. I thought this thing said... Oh, that's right, it makes four at a time. Fantastic. So that means we've actually got, like, 3,600. Very, very nice. What should we research? An easy way to see what we've got available to us is to go to Bioscience Pack 2 in the tree here. Mining productivity, absolutely. 10k. We've got... we're about a third of the way there already. The sooner we get mining productivity, the more... the more resources we're getting from our core drills and everything for less power. Um, I might have to start with that, to be honest. We'll see what exciting things we've got to unlock. We've got a bunch of character upgrades. I'm not too thrilled about that. I mean, it's good, but it's not, it's not like unlocking pylon substation, for example. Uh, prod six. Which I think, I think prod six is the last uh, tier six prod. No, we also need to do speeds. Material. We should already be able to do. Uh, yeah, we actually can unlock speed six already. That's going to be relatively trivial. Should have spotted that sooner. Um, yeah, I guess we'll unlock Productivity 6, because I did say that Tier 6 would be the milestone where I would bother to do a new build to make better modules. And it's pretty cheap, so we'll get that out of the way now. Uh, character inventory, yes please. I did say we should get Productivity's... Uh, the mining productivity as soon as possible, but lab research productivity, change of plan. Uh, let's get that first. Wait, where is it? Wait, it was right here, wasn't it? Lab research. Hold on. Wasn't it one of these? Yeah, here it is. Bio upgrade intelligence to lab research productivity plus 5%. Let's get that discount. Bio upgrade intelligence, indeed. Do you actually use higher than three efficiency modules? Do you mean higher than tier three? Um, well, currently the most common, uh, the most common configuration for our beacons in space is to get negative 70% energy consumption, which would 
probably beef itself up to negative 80%. Well, it depends what other modules we're putting in. So that would make a difference. Um, character crafting speed, don't care. Character health, don't really care. Movement speed is nice, I guess. But I'm used to just using the jetpack. Metallic reagent. I'm guessing this is just an intermediate product. To be honest, I kind of want to just go for lab productivity and then go straight for mining productivity. But I think we'll also treat ourselves to some character slots. Uh, and also the... Uh, also the modules. So the other thing is health, movement speed, crafting speed. That can wait. We need to do... Did we not do Astro yet? I guess not. Well, that's going to be next. But not before we get mining productivity up. This is going to reduce... This is going to give us more stuff for the same energy, and it's also going to give us higher throughput just in general, including our infinite resources throughput. So that's going to be very, very helpful. Okay. So I think we've got enough... I'm pretty sure we've got enough uh, Bio 2 to just plow through... Um, all of those sciences that I just queued up, except for the mining productivity. A C for cat. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I don't suppose this is working. It is not working. I'm going to have to pay attention to that. Veldak, good to see you again also. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Did you just request all science types there? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm surprised I hadn't uh, copied that request a chest to the other science labs, but here we are. Okay. Uh, let's get back to our mole for now. Let's double check that all of that got fixed. I think it did. Why is this... Oh, that's working, actually. Fantastic. And... I think I regret my decision to... to just make multiple train stops here, but have them load with a stack size of one. Um, it's taking... Well, it's not just... It's not so much that it's taking longer than I thought it would. Wait, what? Did I just... Oh, I was looking at the chest. Okay. Uh, it's not just that it's taking longer than I thought it would, but we're getting so many more resources in here. Uh, but then taken out of this block than I expected. New Coverex is going strong. Very, very nice. This is actually the bottleneck. I I bumped up the train limit. Oh, this is why. Okay, three train loads. Train limit three. Do we now get another train scheduled to come here? I suspect we do. There we go. Should have realized that sooner. How's your stream, Seifer Cut? Nice. We've actually got enough to pick up nuclear fuel at the new block already. Okay. Uh, I 
kind of don't know what to do now. Let's get our... Oh. I, I left them parked again. Not good. How much ammo do they have? I saw some of them with zero, not just the one at the front. So I think we'll send them back. We won't need to get the spiders to clear out the biters as much now. Because we've got much, much, much better... Okay, I was going to say we've got much better throughput with the erudite. So that we can get girders here. But apparently... It's still not enough. Uh, is it possible we're bottlenecking on this block now? Why is this one stopped? Iridium powder. Iridium powder should be positive. I wonder if it just takes a little while to saturate here. Yeah, it looks like it does. Okay. That research is... Well, we're already up to mining productivity. That didn't take too long at all. So I guess now it's time... Well, there's a couple of things it's time to do. More than a couple. Uh, we need to do Astro Science 1 and 2. Which is obviously going to take quite a while to go from scratch. Uh, we've done it, we've done Astro 1 in the main bus space before, but that's about it. Oh, we've also done blank observation frames over here. Uh, probably, probably with room to put a wide area beacon in here somewhere. Might be tricky to fit. But we could probably do we could very easily do it if we wasted 10 megawatts. Which I think we can probably afford to in our uh power network in space. That's just a hunch I have. It is a bit wasteful though. Um You should be able to move those belts down a bit to make space. Let's see. We don't have two tiles there to make those undergrounds jump. Uh, hold on. We could put it all the way down here. Which means we could move this up here a bit. Yeah, that would actually be really easy. We just need to move those belts like one tile. And that'll be overkill. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure this build already is overkill. Because the uh, space manufactories are so fast. Anyway, we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, I'm really a bit more interested in getting the new modules. So we've got... Module upgraded from 3 to 4 is looking pretty easy. It's four physical items brought together, all of which we've already got in the rail network. Uh, I'll just double check, but I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I'm very sure, actually. We set up uh, machine learning data to be exported, as well as going into rocket science. Uh, so that's totally fine. It's actually completely full as well. Um, so far, so easy. Material catalog. Biological catalog. Vitalange. Energy catalog. We've already got these things in the rail block. And the same goes for broad. Uh, it's just that with the capacity for crafting these things that we've got, we've got certain material bottlenecks at the moment. 
so actually, that's going to be shockingly easy to set up for the moment. I don't know if we could do, like... Well, probably. Oh, you can do these on the ground as well. But... There's a bunch of resources... There's no productivity bonuses for this. And there's a bunch of stuff we need for it that's in space already. So I think it would be easier to manufacture them in space. I kind of want to physically go there just to make moving around easier and stuff. Uh, let's drop these chests. And... Uh, I want to check on... Rose? Spiders have not got their rockets back yet. Hold on. Why... Why is there 2,000 rockets here, but... This one has no logistic requests for rockets. Okay. That answers that question. Missing portable RTG. Oh, this is the leader. Oh, I messed up the leader. Oh, no. Uh, I found him. Okay, it's fine. Black spider for the leader. And this goes here. I don't know why a bunch of them got rockets placed in their trunk instead of in the rocket uh, loaders. But for some reason with Navsat I'm able to uh, pick them up and when I drop them they go back where they're supposed to. So it's not too difficult to fix. Well, I, I suppose the way to fix it would just be to set their requests to zero, dump everything, and then change them back. But that would be a little bit tedious. How many hours do you have on this server? Uh, yes. Yes, indeed. Nataj Naku, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, okay, so let's bring our military spiders over here. The more of these we kill with rockets, the less we have to spend on Iridium, uh, Iridium pile drivers. And we're getting there. Back up this way, actually. Alright. Uh, that'll probably do for now. Actually, forget that. They've got so many rockets, they can probably clear the entire planet in one trip. Let's keep them going. Although, it seems like they have almost cleared this side. So many. So 
so, so many. Alright, that's enough for now. Back to base. Terrain, check out construction continued mod. What does that do? Uh, I wish I could use the mod browser while I'm in a game. That Iridium Bombardment you mentioned is like a rod from God. Indeed. We're still not seeing girders here at the moment. Why not? Oh. Speak of the Iridium ingots and they shall appear. Reddit prong. Construction continued. Construction continued. I should probably redo... Well, there's a lot of blocks I should redo if I want to improve UPS a bit. Uh, this is one of them. Construct wrong. Uh, okay. HP Crusher. Welcome, welcome. Hope, uh, hope you're doing well. Okay, so there's our girders again, finally. Uh, everything going smoothly on Varus now? Liquid rocket fuel is actually filling up faster than cargo. It's so beautiful. Fantastic. Let's get this build finished. And then we'll put the inserters in. Uh, and then we can probably add more core mining drills. So now you need to produce more cargo sections. I think we'll be okay for cargo rocket sections, actually. Um, we've currently got... Uh, 7.3k packed in this block for some reason. I think I might have made a slight mistake here. Uh, we've got this entire block for making cargo rocket sections. We have to deprioritize. We have to really strictly deprioritize uh, picking up the cargo rocket sections from here. Because just using priorities... Um, what? I think... I, I think we may not have entirely fixed emptying the trains when they go back to the depots. Let's see. Then you need to produce more erudite. That's what that entire planet was about. Uh, we've got... Let's see. Hold on, I need to keep an eye on this right now. Uh, we've definitely got everything in place to unload the trains now. It was probably before I fixed the, the unloaders on the sides that this happened. Uh, but yeah... On Varus, we've got... We haven't bothered to tap them yet, but we've got one, two, three, four, five... Oh, we're already using two of them, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six... Uh, seven... Erudite mines that are quite close by as well. On top of the Erudite uh, core fragments that we're mining here. Um... There's only so much coming in, but it's... We're going to bottleneck on the liquid rocket fuel once we add a little bit more iridium mining. What's that huge eye-like building? Uh, this thing? It's called an umbrella, uh, and it basically protects from giant space lasers. So 
so it costs a lot of energy, uh, especially when it's active, but uh, it'll prevent... Uh, what are they specifically called again? Uh, coronal mass ejections from hitting, uh, hitting the planet and destroying everything. Indeed. Is that the one you were talking about? You would not have to tediously click your Spidertrons to places. Spidertron, which acts as a bot. I wanted to build that with, um, with, uh, what is it called? AAI. It also can protect from enemies trying to use lasers to blow up your factory. It, PvP in space exploration is beta E. It would be. I, I think the effective skill differences in something like that would be extreme. Like, having a slight advantage over someone in terms of how quickly you get your factory going and all of that stuff would snowball out of control very, very quickly. Uh, okay, is this actually built? No, we're missing steam turbines. Do we not have them? We actually don't have them. Okay. In that case, I'll schedule... Wait, how many do we need? Well, you know what's easier than counting how many we need? Just sending more than we need. Wait, what happened to the combinator here? Okay, fine. We'll count how many we need. Um, where's Varus again? We are missing 500 heat pipe. Actually, call it more than that because you can lose some in transit. Uh, let's call it just like a thousand heat pipe, 10 uh, nuclear reactors, 200 and 150. Uh, heat pipe. Thousand. Uh, hundred and fifty of these. Let's say three hundred of these. And twenty. Where is it? The uh, reactor. Plenty of those. Uh, since sending a rocket this far is so expensive and prone to failure, I'd rather load extra stuff. So that's going to load... Uh, that, that's going to be sent in addition to whatever gets sent when there's an automatic resupply. Some AFK action mechanics, so you could run a server constantly. Could be fun if there was some rubber band mechanics, maybe. It would honestly be as much about how many hours you can put in. Yeah, it depends. Um, Alright, let's go to space. Where's this aimed? Oh, this is full of... Uh, this is full of stuff from when we went to Rose. Uh, I think we'll switch that off for now. Actually, you know what I should have done? Oh, I'll still turn these off for now. Uh, what I should have done is taken the rocket that's regularly scheduled to go to the Navis Orbit Mall. This one right here. 
And away we go. Auto save timing. Sound effect is a bit out of sync because our UPS is not 60. And here we are again. It's good to be back. Okay. Uh, so what's our first target? Let's swap these. I should make a speedy spider up here. Red. Uh, just one uh, Robopot. Actually, I can't make it maximum speedy if I have it. I didn't mean to say Robopod, I meant RTG. I can't make it super speedy if I have an RTG in here. There's no enemies, so the rest can just be batteries and solar panels. Uh, how about this? And then... Just gotta turn off my auto trash. And we'll make that good boy number three. Our construction spiders. Oh, they're right here. Number five. And scaffolding spiders number six. Fantastic. Okay. Where should we make our modules? And can we, should we do it all in one block? Actually, come to think of it, we could probably just make the modules here. Uh, do they need any fluids? Nope. Although, we are getting... They are getting exponentially more time-consuming to make, so that might be a bad idea. Alright, let's head over... Probably over here somewhere. Keep them close to the mall and away from everything else. So, should we do the modules from Absolute Scratch, or should we take the modules from here? I'm thinking totally from scratch, probably. The spider is so very, very slow. Uh... I guess we still only get 30 kilowatts from our portable solar panels, even though we're in orbit. Um, but not to worry, that'll add up to more than enough to fill these batteries faster than we use them up just for moving around. Okay. So we have red and green and blue circuits. Batteries, that's four. Iridium plate. Are we going to try to do all three of these in one block? Or just one at a time? We could try to leave room to finish all the way to tier nine in each block. But I'm thinking we'll probably end up... Hmm... The problem with that is how many inputs we have, but if we use bots, it's not a problem at all. 
uh, the throughput for each type of item is actually really low. So I'm thinking maybe we can just use 50 logistic bots. Maybe. Otherwise, we're looking at one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. We're up to tier six out of nine, and we're up to eight different inputs. We can easily do eight inputs up here. More than that, as a matter of fact. I don't suppose I can cheat and see what's coming next. Uh, let's see. Tier 7 requires one more thing. Tier 8... I'm going to guess these are all the same. Uh, requires one more thing plus a fluid. Comprehensive biological catalog. Extended biological catalog. Yeah. And tier 9... Uh, yet... Wait, I think that's the same. Extended biological catalog. Extended biological catalog but it's one more fluid. Okay, I think we're just going to give up on trying to plan out the last three tiers of modules ahead of time. So that is one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight physical inputs. Uh, can we and should we do this with belts? Probably not. Well, probably not should. Also, the ratios are going to be... kind of weird. I'm thinking we could just use like, different numbers of speed modules or something. Unless we use crafting combinators. Which might not be the worst idea. Okay, if we give this full speed, including beacon, we're looking at only one per second? Okay, well, this one is also pretty slow, still kind of slow. Oh, I didn't put speed modules in the other ones, but yeah, one per second on a full speed uh, space manufacturing. So we need... I'm just, I know some of these already, but I'm going to lay it out for planning purposes. Uh, red circuit, green circuit, red and blue, blue and battery, blue, iridium plate, and machine learning data. Iridium plate, machine learning data, uh, material catalog, and broad material catalog, right? Can you use productivity modules on making modules? Nope, afraid not. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it in space. I'm 
Okay, so if we have belts... Um, well, first of all, let's... I'm, I'm thinking if I try to ratio this exactly, it's not going to work out that well, but we can try. Uh, what would the ratio normally be if we don't use any speed modules or anything? 64 seconds on this, 32 seconds on this. But we need three of these. So it's going to be 0.66%, uh, 66% fast enough to do this one. I think. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, so if we do two of them, that's overkill. But it's not like we can do one and a third, or one and a half. So if we double every time, that's one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Uh, of course we could use some speed modules in the slower ones. Uh, in the ones that... Does it, does it double all the way back? 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2. Yes, it does. So it's 3 to 1 each time. And it takes twice as long each time. Hmm... Oh, also, it's not a doubling every time. If we have to have more than one machine going back each time, it's like double, and then double, double, and then double, double. If we wanted to ratio this correctly, we need an insane number of machines. Why don't you use Hell Mode? I guess we could use that. Um, let's see. Speed module... How do I add this again? Select energy... Add recipe. There we go. Six. Speed module six. Speed module five, four, three... That's a battery. Two, one. Um, and we're going to make them in space manufactories. Probably. Okay, so where do we... You could use space assemblers instead of manufactories, maybe. Or we could just not worry too much about the ratio. Less entities if you use the big one, so it's better. Yeah, I'm... I'm seriously considering just using an autocrafter. Uh, although, at the higher tiers, there's two different fluids, so that might be a little bit of a problem. Actually, no, I think I can figure out a way around that. So what... What we might do... We already know we need, like, 1.5 machines to support the next tier up over and over, and it snowballs out to a ridiculous number. Uh, what I think I'll do instead is make a clever auto crafter. So we're going to need a crafting combinator. We're going to... I think the only tricky thing about this is the prerequisites. If we're lucky, um, it's going to just... 
select the first recipe in the series anyway. As long as it's not zero. So I'm going to connect this to our uh, crafting combinator. And it's trying to make speed module one. Fantastic. Uh, what if we get rid of that? Speed module two. Nice. Speed module three. Speed module four. Speed module five. Speed module six. So we don't have to do any work to get the prioritization in place. That's just the arbitrary ordering of the signals. Uh, so what we're going to do is... I think we, w we may use a bot system here. Well, it should be easy to belt it anyway. But then we can copy-paste as many of these as we like. Why do we have roboports here? That's weird. I don't remember putting those here. Spider Battle JD vs. Monkey. Sounds fun. Uh, so. We're going to... Whether it's by belt or by quest or chest. Uh, we're going to have... Since this thing is so big, it's actually going to be pretty trivial, I think, to have all of the inputs here. Uh, especially considering how um, considering how low how slow the inputs are going to be. Um, how fast? How fast is it going to go for speed one? Let's say we use a wide area bacon, full speed, full speed this thing. We're looking at 32, wow, 160 green circuits per second and 32 advanced. Uh, that is going to be the fastest one though. Uh, speed module 2 is, uh, 48 per second, 16 and 80. Forty, twenty-four, and 8. And so on. Do we really need... I think we do need to go full speed because the speed module 6, like the fastest we can go is one per second for these after we do the prerequisites. How fast are the other ones going to be though? Speed 1 is literally 32 per second. I'm thinking it might actually be really difficult for the bots to keep up. So maybe we should... Maybe we should use chests. At least for some of these resources, definitely. And then... Uh, how many inserters do we need to keep up with this? 11.56 for green circuits. This might be a tall order. Uh, we can only fit 9 on one side. Hmm. I, 
I think we're just going to accept that the the smaller ones are going to be bottlenecked on inserters. I just launch the modules from the planet instead of crafting them in space. We we do already have a supply chain for them, but um, I think it's is it denser to send modules or? I guess it's probably denser to send them as modules. Where are we getting our modules from here? I think... No, we're making them here. Yeah, we're already... Um, we're already crafting them in space as it is. It's also like three whole belts of circuits. Gotta be hard to supply that at full speed. And do you need that many modules? Yeah, that's a good point. I think we can probably just... How many resources did we count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, and the last 1, 2, 3, 4... Five. It's pretty much only... Green, red, and maybe blue circuits that need to be input particularly quickly. Um... How many inserters is that? Six reds. Two blues. And then... 12 greens. Okay, what if we actually do that? No, we're not... Well, how fast is this? 160. We can actually keep up with that with belts. But we would only be feeding one of these machines. Which is fine, I guess. But most of the time... We don't actually need to maintain that kind of throughput of green circuits continuously. Because once we get past tier 2... Well, once we get past tier 1, actually, uh, we're not using green circuits at all. Um... Well, let's just design the circuitry and stuff, and then we'll think about optimizing it. Uh, so this is going to be... I might just illustrate this. Uh, green circuits, red circuits, whoops. Blue circuits. Batteries. I think I have some. Do I not? I do. What's the next tier? Uh, battery. Iridium plate machine learning data. I should just put filter inserters to illustrate this. Green circuit, red circuit, blue circuit. Battery, uh, iridium plate, and machine learning data. Although I think we're already at the point where like a half belt of each. Well, technically we're at the point where a half belt of each is more than enough. But direct insertion from a box would be better. Um... Iridium plate, machine learning data, and then material catalog. Wait, did I? Yeah, material catalog and broad material catalog. Hmm. 
Okay. That's a lot. Let's do that. And then we need to... How do we do this? I'm very tempted to use the logistic network because it'll make things a lot easier to compare what we've got. Um, we're going to have an overflow chest. Which is going to let us shove things straight back in. The overflow stuff might have to filter back to where this goes, but we'll see. Um, output. Can we actually... We can't have an inserter go both ways. We want to craft, uh, we want to craft tier one speed modules until we've got, say, 500, wait, how many stacks is that? 10. That's too many. What if we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 45? Uh, yeah, that would be enough for nine different types. They all stack to 50, right? Stack size 50. Fantastic. Okay, so our target is 250 for each type of uh, module. Although, I guess with the top tier one, it doesn't really matter. We're going to be exporting those. Um, in order to have a chest that can go back to the space manufactory, we're just going to do it like this. We'll read the hand contents of this inserter so that the amount that we have doesn't flicker. And this one as well, I guess. And we'll multiply that by negative one. Arithmetic combinator. Um, now, just to check... It's only the final product that will be output this way. And there's no, like, scrap products or anything. So, this will only be modules. Uh, I could always put, like, a filter on this, but there's too many filters. Regardless. H times negative 1. Output H. And then put that together with our positive uh, number of constant combinators. So it's what we want minus what we've got. Keep crafting until zero. And I forgot I put those resources there, so it's already working. So currently... Uh, it's trying to make another 234 speed module 1s, and then it'll go on to speed module 2s, I'm pretty sure. If it doesn't, 
uh, have this implicit uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If the implicit ordering doesn't work out the way we hope, uh, we're just going to have to add something ourselves. And yeah, I think that's basically it. I think I will do a bot build with this because uh, it makes it very easy to do the drop off and it also makes it easy to check what we've got in the logistic network. If we can probably support one of these with 50 logistic bots, maybe? Probably, actually. When it's crafting the slower things, they'll have time to catch up with the inputs for the green circuits and stuff. Um, and... On the other hand, if we want to scale this up, we can copy-paste, make more of these, and just have more bots supplied into the, um, uh, into this rail block. But as it is, uh, I'm going to guess slash hope that, uh, 50 logistic bots, keeping up with one of these is going to be enough for our needs. And hopefully we won't have to use bot attrition to make modules at a decent pace. We'll see. Roboport. It also means the whole build is going to be really compact. Um, we'll probably be able to go all the way up to tier 9 with this. Okay, so we're going to do some... I was going to say storage chests. Yeah, we're going to need storage chests here, actually. Requested chests, green circuits, uh, red circuits. Might have to bump up some of those because the demand for green circuits is so extremely high. How many green circuits do we need for a tier one? Five. And that's the only one that needs green circuits, right? So 5 times 250 is 1250. Make it 1500. Um, so while other modules are being crafted, uh, we're going to get enough green circuits put in here to make all of the tier 1s after that drops down to 0. Uh, what about red circuits? That's 250 plus 5 times 50. Uh, 500 in total. And then... Blue circuits goes into the next four tiers, actually. Uh, it's five, 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 and five. That makes it easy, at least. Five times 250 is 1250. Don't need a calculator for that one. Batteries, I think, only go into tier threes. And we need precisely one of them per module. Uh, Iridium plate, I think, is also one. And that's five, actually. So 
1250 again. Iridium plate. 1250. Machine learning data. Only one, and it's literally only for the tier 4 modules. Okay. Uh, so 250 of those. And then... I think the broad, uh, both types of catalogue were just one. Cool. Oh. So I'll go for 250 of those as well. Well, to be honest, those are going to be so slow. I'm pretty sure machine learning data is going to be the same story. Uh, that's going to be so slow, it doesn't matter what we put in the requests here. Um... But uh, we'll just say 250 for argument's sake. Broad. And regular. Okay. Why not just use one of the large chests? Uh, because I don't have any. Yeah, we're not using the AAI containers this time. Kinda wish I did, to be honest. But we've come this far without them. Okay, uh... That's going to be that. On the off chance that these other modules end up in this chest, or somewhere else, I'll just set those requests. This will also let us use the logistic network uh, to know how much we've got in case we want to do that. Um, I could make this a purple chest. Yeah, I think I should, actually. We'll still direct insert from there, if it's convenient. And then... Uh, we actually do need to read uh, what's in this chest as well. Filter insert uh, speed module 6. Uh, none. Read hand contents hold. Seems good. Although I guess, um, I guess we don't actually need this, actually. It'll just never insert, uh, speed module 6s. Yeah. That should be fine. And we can bump all of these requests up to 250. Will definitely be enough room for that. Actually, I shouldn't have any requests on that first one. Okay. I think we're almost ready. Uh, let's put a bunch of stack conceptors over here. We just need to set up a lot of LTN requests. And 
I'll need to read from the RoboPort for what we've got. Request stack threshold. 160. Uh, first is green circuits. And you can probably ask for two train loads of each. Make sure we don't run out. Uh, batteries. Stack to 200. Although, considering how slow they're going to be, that is really overkill. So let's just uh, have those delivered a little bit more last minute. Blue circuits are uh, consumed a lot more, though. Uh, what's next? After batteries, it's Iridium Plate and Machine Learning Data. Stacks to 40. Um, forty times one sixty is six thousand four hundred, twelve thousand eight hundred for two train loads. And uh, what's next again? Did I do machine learning data? That's just 8,000, or oh, 16,000. Stack size 50. Two train loads. Material catalog and rod. Uh, those are gonna be consumed so slowly. I'm just gonna set those to 8K. Uh, make it like slightly more than that. Okay, the station's going to be fun to name. Um, green circuit, red circuit, blue circuit, battery, iridium plate, machine learning data, and then the catalogs. Did I get all of that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's it. Fantastic. All right, let's uh, see what we can summon from the train network. And... Yeah, I'm kind of dying to see how the go see how this goes to be honest um normally i would put the train output all the way down here but we're only using we could probably use a quarter block for this And we'll have a small train pick up the modules. Uh, we're going to request speed module six. We're going to put them into the train. We're going to Uh, set the train length to 3, provide threshold, I'm just going to set it to one stack for now, we can probably change that later, but it is probably going to take a while to make a stack, well, especially the first stack of uh, speed module 6. We've got green circuits on the way. Fantastic.
Mining Productivity 7 is actually half complete. And we're still churning out Bioscience 2. Fantastic. Okay, where's our train? I should probably set the train limit here a bit higher. Let's say 6. We'll double the uh, inserters. We also need to place our logistic uh, bots. If we need to beef this up, uh, we could have a small train dropping off uh, logistic bots from here. I could probably set it up so that we don't insert uh, the speed module 9s unless the logistic train stop output tells us that we're asking for them. And then I'd be able to use this stop uh, to drop off bots. Let's do a filter. Here's one of our trains. We're going to read robot statistics as available. Actually, Yeah, we'll, we'll use available if we're going to do this. But we'll see how 50 go for now. Available logistic bots, available construction bots. Bots go here. And that should actually be 1,000, shouldn't it? Filter inserter. Actually, I'll just blacklist this. Uh, a filter insert is fast enough for this purpose. Whitelist the bots. And then... Uh, and then we're going to request some bots be delivered here. It looks... Oh, we got catalogs already. Broad catalogs, no less. I don't think our 50 logistic bots are going to be able to keep up, even with the reduced range. We'll see how it goes. Since we get a red circuit train arriving here, we'll start to get a sense of whether they can keep up. If they can't, we'll start, we'll add a request, uh, let's say request stack threshold here. And we'll feed it a negative number of logistic bots, whatever. This won't be some arbitrary target for how many bots we should have. It'll just be enough to trigger a delivery and they'll keep getting delivered as long as we need more bots, uh, as long as available bots drops to zero. Okay, here comes red circuits. Let's see if it works. Fantastic. So we can see uh, our count of speed module ones increasing uh pretty quickly really and if we look at a pylon next to this wire here uh we can see the number of speed module ones that we are trying to make dropping down 
As soon as that reaches zero, I believe it'll switch over to speed module twos. Twenty two, ten, six, and there we go. Uh, I would have thought it would switch back to speed module ones almost immediately, actually. Why isn't it switching back to speed module ones? What have we got here? Nothing but speed module two. Okay. It's because of keep. Okay, keep, removing keep crafting until zero might. Up oh, there we go. Yeah, that keeps it from switching. Oh wow! Like what? Like okay, that's not working the way I imagined it, but it is working. We've already got. Uh, I thought we already got. Yeah, we already got a speed module four. Why is it trying to make a speed module five all of a sudden? Okay, we're going to need to add our own uh, logic to make sure that the prerequisites are made. Although, I suspect... Honestly, I suspect if we uh, have like a memory cell that we pulse this into and disconnect from the crafting combinator every little while, Probably if we feed it, well actually if I feed it this again from scratch, my theory is it's going to go back to crafting uh, speed module 1. It did not, okay, never mind. So we are going to need to set up some prerequisites. Uh, the easiest way to do that Isn't a chain of assembly machines faster and simpler? Maybe, but it's less fun. Uh, it also uses more power. Okay, so there's a couple of things I came up with for um, prerequisites. The first one needs a decider combinator for each type, which is not going to be too bad for modules. Uh, the second one you can do like a group of things has to be made before you make the next group of things. Do not question the circuit network. Indeed. Mad Mike, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so we're gonna say if uh Or is it speed modules? If speed module equals zero, output speed module two. If speed module two equals zero, output speed module three. If speed module three, output speed module four, and so on. All right, let's check. One to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and five to six. Okay. So, uh, if we have any of these things at zero, we want to output a negative to say, don't craft these things. We've already got a negative 
here. That's interesting. Oh, I disconnected this. Let me check again. Uh, it's trying to make a five. Uh, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure the crafting combinators do work if you feed them a negative. I'll just double check it. Speed module one. Negative one. Yeah, so unfortunately we'll need one more combinator here. Uh, we're just going to say... Uh, each greater than zero output each. That goes there. And we're going to need a negative, uh, a minus one combinator for this slot, or a minus something. I was thinking about could we hijack this one and somehow save a combinator, but since we need a larger negative multiplier, we're definitely going to need one more combinator. Okay. So we're going to multiply that negative into the ground. Each greater than zero output each. So basically, if we have no speed module ones, we send a negative a million signal for speed module two. Therefore, speed module two is removed from here. Therefore, we're not trying to craft speed module two. So if the prerequisites are missing from these chests, uh, we're not going to try to craft something. If we wanted to, we could also set a bunch of prerequisites, like if there's no catalogs, don't try to craft the next tier up. But that'll sort itself out anyway. Okay. So we've already got some speed module fives. Very nice. And I think I might, if I use keep crafting until zero, it might be a bit more stable with which type we're trying to make. Luckily, crafting combinator, if it switches from one recipe to the other that uses, for example, advanced circuits, um, it doesn't vomit the advanced circuits out. Uh, seems our bots are really struggling to keep up with all of this, but on the other hand, the machine inputs are actually all fine. They're just struggling to catch up with the um, active provider chests, but the the trains don't need to drop stuff off very often to keep this going. So that might actually be all it takes. What are you using speed module 5s in? Uh, speed module 6? Blueprint and add another machine? Indeed. Yeah, depending on how slow this is, I might copy-paste it, and I might add more logistic bots if needed. But we've now got a template that we can spam all over the place. We could easily do three of these machines in one quarter block. Cool. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I thought, um... I thought it would be a lot more difficult to set up tier 6 modules. What about speed module 6? 
uh, we're going to put it in various machines. Okay, so should we copy paste this for the other two types of modules? I think I'll still leave this uh, set up so that we don't necessarily bring any bots into it. We'll see how it goes. So this one's going to go here. Um, I'll add a tag here for speed module 6. And... I need to quickly change the settings on this one. Thank you for the follow, Bandit of Deception. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, let's do prods next. The only downside is we've got a bunch of clicking to do. And I think we'll be able to use a build like this to go all the way to tier 9, because we've got multiple fluid inputs on the, uh, on the space manufactories, and there's only two fluids that we need to use in total. So we could have, like, two different pipes coming in here. Should be fine. Okay, uh, most of this is going to overlap. Let's see what's going to be different. That's the same, that's the same, that's the same, and now we need Vulcanite block instead of machine, uh, instead of uh, Iridium plate. Vulcanite block. How do you even make speed module 9 from tier 8? Indeed. Mass, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. What did I set the requests to for Iridium plate? 1250? It's probably going to be the same over here. Yeah, 12.50. Although I think that's wholly unnecessary. Uh, machine loading data check. And then we need Vitamalange extract, as well as biological catalog. I see how it is. Oh, we already put these here. Let's not do that. Uh, I could put extract here so that we have two different inserters putting it in. Whoa, 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 what did I press? Extract. I think it's going to be 1250. No. It's going to be uh, 250. Isn't it? Well, it's going to be so slow, it's not going to matter. Regardless. Stack size is 50 and 100. Okay. That'll be fine. Uh, so this is biological catalog. I don't think we have to count how many this is going to be. The bots are going to keep up with it very, very easily. 
tricks aside, I think tier 9's a 2,000 advanced neural gel, superconductivity cable, and three tier 8 modules. Sounds expensive. Although with productivity modules, they eventually pay for themselves, right? I need to change this. I'm surprised we didn't get any trains coming here, actually. Okay, Vulcanite block. Oh, oh, I know why. Um, 18,000. Uh, we didn't get any coming because they're part of the same robo network. Okay, cool. Let's get... I don't think we need this many train stops. On the other hand, it's going to reduce the length for most of these resources that they have to travel. It's probably fine. Uh, biological catalog. And broad biological catalog. Oh, and extract. Stacks to 50. Should have done this for the catalog. Cool. Uh, I don't feel like updating this right now. There we go. Vulcanite block. Damn it. Vulcanite block. Why does it keep... I, I distinctly put the cursor between these two, and then it put the Vulcanite block at the end. Okay. Biological catalog, biological catalog, uh, broad biological catalog. Fantastic. Uh, it seems we don't have the bio catalogs to spare right now. Uh, and we need to set the requests here. Was it 250 of each? Yeah. Oh no. Um, let me just turn off my personals. Put these back in here. Whoops. Drop off the prod threes, why not? And then. This station that is going to be looking for rod sixes, and this is going to be rod six provider. I guess we only need one of these stations to have the robot drop off since they're all together. Need to name this station as well. Oh, and this would be part six as well. Cool. Speed module six. Fantastic. We could maybe set up more requester chests for the really high throughput items.
We'll see. Uh, let me get these broads back where they belong. And what are we up to here? We've got 11 speed module fives. Not too bad. So at what point does it actually switch over? It should keep going until the speed module one signal is zero. Wait, what? How many speed ones do we have here? 175, our target is 250, is it not? Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, here is where I should be looking. So we're at 40, 35, 20, and it should switch over to something else. Now, fantastic. I think that was our first speed module 9. Wait, did it not finish it or something? Where did it go? Am I blind? Oh, did it go over here? No? I did just see it making a speed module 9, did I not? Bonk, indeed. Do you make your data substrate with the contaminated water recipe or other? Oh, do you mean the uh, uh, polished data storage substrate? Yeah, we're using the contaminated cosmic water recipe. Or the cosmic water recipe, if you like. One full rocket of T3 modules makes 100-ish T9s. Wow. Okay, um, did I, or did I not see a tier 9? I thought I did. I think it must have switched to the tier 9 recipe, uh, dropped in all of the tier 5s. And then realized there were none left, and then switched recipe because it couldn't make it. From your exploration of the pyramid, didn't you get some tier 9s there? Uh, yeah, but they're not in this robo network. Maybe look in production statistics. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we didn't just make one. Uh, six. Oh. Oh, we did. 18 seconds ago. So, just while I was talking about it. Just now. Is it over here? It is. There it is. Our first speed module 6. Beautiful. So, what, is, what does this give us compared to a tier 3? Um, I want to hold it. Let's see, we've got energy consumption plus 80%, energy consumption plus 200%, speed plus 40 versus speed plus 70%, it's almost twice the speed bonus, and pollution goes from plus 8 to plus 14%, which is uh, comparatively more efficient. So it, bec it, it becomes even less energy efficient for the speed bonus, but obviously you're getting a lot more speed bonus uh, total. Fantastic. Energy, let's go. Sure. Um, so we're just going to do... Like so... 
Wait, let me just double check I didn't miss anything up here. I'm pretty sure we're good though. Yeah, we should be fine. Energy just means more solar? Uh, do you mean efficiency? Um, yeah, but also, depending on where you put it, like in a beacon, you can save an obscene amount of energy. Uh, efficiency. On the other hand, I don't love spending energy catalogs on these things. But I kind of want to set up the build, even if I switch it off for now. Also, can we... Nope. Okay. So this is going to go here. First things first is we turn off this constant combinator. So we don't try to craft anything. And we need to get rid of the requested chests until we're ready. We don't need the bot drop-off. Um, and this is going to be... Efficiency Module 6. Fantastic. Minus 300%. Uh, it gives us... Minus 400%, actually. That's not bad. So, one efficiency module offsets the energy cost of two speed modules. Is that the same? That is a lot better ratio-wise compared to, like, speed 3 versus efficiency 3. Speed 3 is plus 80% energy consumption, minus 100%. And for tier 6, it's plus 200%, minus 400%. Difference is day and night. Uh, okay. Tier 6 is insane? Yeah, it seems that way. So what do we need for it? Uh, energy catalog and broad energy catalog. Chromium plate machine learning. It looks like it's a lot more similar um, to speeds. We're literally just swapping out uh, three of the chests. This is Holmium Plate. It was Holmium Plate, right? Yes. And I'll just copy these ones. Then change them. Actually, get rid of that. I think the bots are going to bring material stuff here again. Uh, if we just request 50, it's going to be more than enough. Energy catalog and broad energy catalog. Okay, uh, hold me in plate. Oh, we need to change this. What does it stack to? Does it even matter? Probably not. The rate we consume it overall is going to be so slow. And there's a whole chest for it here. Uh, so let's just go with... 250? So we just need to set up the... Oh, we need to change all of these uh, to efficiency modules. Oh, 
And same goes for all of this. No quick way to do it, unfortunately. Copy paste. set that up now. It's already getting started and we need to set some different requests over here. Uh, hold me in plate. Stacks to 100. A little bit more than a train load then. Um, what's the next thing? Uh, it's just the catalogs. Catalog. A little bit more than a train load. Broad catalog. A little bit more than a train load. Update the station name. Some of these station names get awfully long. Uh, but yeah. I guess I will leave that running, actually. Why not? We don't need these extra... pylons. I think that's it. We might tweak it later on to get more throughput, but that is actually all we need to get a trickle of tier 6 modules. We've already got 5. Fantastic. I think the first tweak we should make though, right away, is... Oh wow, the bots aren't keeping up already. Okay. Let's bring in some bots. Um, I forgot the logistic... Uh, the robocod over here. We need to... Tell LTN... Hang on. Can we do it here? Not really. Let's just do it here. Need to read robot statistics. Feed that to the Altium train stop. Uh, also, I forgot to set this part up. It looks pretty tacky like that. But what can you do? Okay, so... Read robot statistics, available logistic bots. Since we're bringing in bots, I'll bring in just a few construction bots as well. Um, we'll put this over here. Filter, insert... Oh, we already... We already set that up. Okay. Well, I think we will put it over here instead, though, just because we need that there to talk to LTM. So, available logistic bots and total construction bots. Uh, we're going to request 50 of each. And some repair packs. Just in case. Set filters blacklist. Um, it's also going to have a blacklist of productivity modules at some point. 
but I don't think that matters. We could just change it to a red wire if it did matter. Thank you for the follow, Dark Rail. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we have our train on the way. Fantastic. Uh, I forgot to set it to the request a call. Oh, it, it is also a provider stop, so I'll leave it as it is. So that's going to drop off... Um, I guess also repair packs. I could make this... No. We're just going to need an extra chest here. Uh, we're going to blacklist productivity 6 and put things in there. Fantastic. Your production modules don't work because you don't have a vitamelange inserter. Uh, good point. It was extract, wasn't it? Did we request it? We did. Bit of melange extract. I'm surprised. Oh, it would help if I switched this on. That would probably uh, cause the extract to be summoned. And we need to put it in here as well. And I'm just going to remove the filter from this one. Potentially, indeed. El Poncho, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Same to Dogar. Yeah, so I was thinking about putting the... Um, putting an extra inserter there for the green circuits. But... But, but, but... Um... It was actually already bottlenecking on the bots themselves. Also, I think we'll bump it up so that... Let's see, 250... Um, 30 stacks, we've got 18 left. I think we'll have... Like, four times as much speed modules that we'll make if we can't make anything else. Uh, the tier 1 modules for each type, I mean. So that way, if we're... If we're waiting on more advanced resources, we can get ahead of... the requests. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Okay. Efficiency, 250 of everything else. And is there anywhere else I might have forgotten to change the signals? If you remove the filter, that inserter may get stuck with an item in its grabber? Uh, I don't think so. As long as it's the only inserter that is inserting a specific resource. Although, now that you mention it, we'll get rid of that one. Let the bots sort that out. Did you turn on the efficiency station? Yes, in... Oh, the station itself? Nope. I don't think we've got uh, energy catalogs. Oh, we do. No, I was thinking of Astro. Yeah, we've got... Uh, we've got energy catalogs here. Somehow, we've just barely not got enough for a pickup. 31,000 broad energy catalogs, but not enough regular energy catalogs to 
could trigger a train deliver uh, delivery, weirdly enough. What are we missing here? Uh, conductivity data. Back to this poor decision to put all of that in one block. We're missing a uh, thermofluid output, actually, because the wire isn't connected. Okay, I see how it is. This is just one more example of where we upgraded to pylon substations and forgot that something was connected via substation. So in a few seconds we should see a train coming to get uh, the 25 degree thermofluid. It seems like our inputs are all totally fine here. And that'll give us our conductivity data. Classic, indeed. So the moment that train gets there, and the pumps work super fast, we should see these electromagnetic facilities working again. And... Fantastic. These ones as well. And also this one, probably, because uh, we turn... Is this cold thermofluid? No, that's probably fine. We output... Um... Wait, what? Negative 100 becomes negative 10. This uses negative 100. This use, they all use negative 100, but one of these outputs negative 10 as opposed to negative 20, as opposed to 25. So we use the hypercooler to just push it back to uh, the two fluids that we've already got in this block. Okay. Fantastic. Oh, look at those bots go already. We're up to 240. Broad, uh, bio catalogs are not struggling. That's nice. Uh, broad bio catalogs might be a different story. Uh, what about vulcanite blocks? They're probably on their way. Yep, here they are. Fantastic. All right, let's leave our devices to their devices. Uh, and I should have, I think I've set it up so that a small train will pick up the tier six modules as, as soon as we've got a stack of them. I don't actually, I haven't actually programmed in a destination yet, but we can do that now. Except the request stack threshold is an entire short train. Wasn't there a reason? I, I thought I set this to 160. Hmm. It's probably fine. Okay, what should we do next? We've got an hour. Um, I think I should probably check on outposts and stuff. We should probably make another iridite mine. The The rate of production of liquid fuel is significantly faster than the belt coming in at the moment. Oh, but we're going to get more... We're going to get more core mining happening if we just finish our... Um, 
our nuclear plant. Looks like we are ready to go. I should have... Where is it? I should have requested some solar panels uh, to be sent to this place. That'll help as well. Let's say... Oops. Let's just send a thousand of these and a thousand of these with every regularly scheduled delivery until we have lots. I don't want to go too overboard until we've got a better flow of uh, accumulators, for example. Speaking of which, it seems like we're stuck on... I was going to say Holmium Cable. But actually we are making... Oh, I see the problem. Okay. I think it is about time I update this little circuit here. Um, there's a danger in multiplying these arbitrarily by like 10 or something. In that... If you're trying to make something like a cargo landing pad, it'll request way too much stuff. But we've already got it set up so that concrete and steel, among other things, are just always available up here and don't have to be put in the dynamic requester chest. Um, so what I might do... Stream dead? Uh oh. Uh, did it resurrect? Are we good? The KBPS is all over the place. We're still dropping frames. All of them, I think. It back. Come on, Australian internet. Repetitive beats. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we're gonna go... Uh... I'm gonna bring this down here. Holy moly, that chat delay? Uh-oh. I'm just going to disconnect this for now. And this goes here. Each greater than zero. Output each. And then multiply by 10. Alright, and then we're going to set all of these to multiply by input count. So that is hopefully going to request... Oh my god. Oh, it hasn't updated yet, I don't think. 9.9k. Oh, each greater than zero output each one. That's what I meant to do. That's a bit better. Maybe a two-minute chat delay. Jeez. Refresh. We're good. Well, I don't know how good we are. Keep on streaming. Twitch will catch up eventually. Is it Twitch, though? Um... I think we'll try multiplying this by, like, 50. And we should get a pretty reasonable amount of stuff requested in these requester chests. Uh, 
50, 50, 200, 400. Isn't this stack for portable RTG? Stacks to 20, so that's 10 stacks. 10, 11, 12. And then, yeah, that should be okay. Cool. Test, we are not good. Yeah, I think it's on my end. Uh, going by past experience, it'll probably clear up soon, but I can only hope. There's a huge delay, but it looks like stream is more stable. Well... My upload rate is fluctuating a lot. And it's more or less half of what I normally have, or more, what I normally use, rather. I normally have like three times what I need to upload 60 FPS. There's no Holmium cable here. Because we don't have any. Why do we have no Holmium cable? Because there isn't any. Why isn't there any? Because... Because there's no Holmanite? Is there no Holmanite just because we have limited throughput? Or do we have a serious problem? I think it's just limited throughput. Yeah, I think we need more power. We're, we're, we're definitely bottlenecking on electricity for Holmanite. Um, so we need to head over there and maybe build another... Over to Taser, maybe, maybe build another nuclear plant. Maybe spam some solar panels. The thing is, we're using media point defense, so if we use solar panels, we're going to need a lot of these. If we make another nuclear plant, it's going to be relatively simple. Test. Dropped frames. Yeah, we've been dropping a lot of frames for a few, for a few minutes now. Add more streaming bots? I wish I could. Even if you can afford it, that's not necessarily uh, not necessarily an option you have in Australia. I hate Twitch player, honestly. It's on my end, though. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I could... If, if you don't mind my upload speed dropping even worse for about a minute, I could do a speed test. Let's go. Okay, that actually... Download looks really, really good. And upload. Upload is actually pretty good. It's not my connection. Huh. Okay. That's that's actually pretty surprising to me. Um Considering the way I've got things set up, we use 6 megasecond. Uh while we're having this problem, I just did a speed test and we got 10 meg up, which is probably, we, we can get like, I don't know, 16 to 20 up if I'm not doing something. So it was probably competing with Twitch upload as well. So it actually is Twitch, it seems.
Twitch player independently of these dropped frames. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised by that. Um, it's not my connection, or at least not this time. And it looks like we're stable now. Okay, unless there's some... Unless there's some conspiracy among ISPs to, like, speed up your internet when you use a speed test. Uh, and that just caused it to work better. It seems like that wasn't on my end. Time to send an angry letter to ISP? Yeah, unfortunately, I don't really have that option. It's out of my control. I think we are back, indeed. We got green light, we got, uh, dropped frames not increasing. Yeah, I don't have delay anymore. Okay, it's, it's probably a coincidence, but just in case, if that happens again, I'm gonna try a speed test again. If it immediately starts improving after a speed test, I'm going to be suspicious, to say the least. Oh, I forgot to put the rest of the portable solar panels in the speedy spider. Where is the speedy spider? There you are. It's still got most of its battery charged already. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so we've got modules. What? What? Uh, we've got modules. We've got... Uh, Suboptimal throughput of Holmium. I really want to head over there and improve it, but I don't really want to use the last most of an hour of the stream for that. I think that's more of an off-stream uh, thing to do. Since we're basically just copy-pasting stuff we've already got. Adding some weak defenses with logistic supply over here. Not too interesting. Uh, should we start on... Which catalogue should we start on? We've got uh, ast Astronomic. Astronomic's actually the only one we haven't started yet. Let's get to it. Where should we start Astronomic? What will we actually need for it? Um, I think we'll probably do it over here-ish. It's not going to make that much of a difference. But even so. Let's do it here. So we need our scaffolding spiders. The most complicated one. Uh, well, hopefully doing it in rail blocks is going to break down some of that complexity for us. Oh yeah, I remember this. Was this like the first... I think it was the first uh, space science that we did. Yeah, you know, apart from like rocket science, obviously. So I actually started on the most complicated one. That is cool and great. Okay, well, let's figure out what the first step is going to be in any case. Uh, first of all, we're going to make some rail blocks. Uh-oh. Brunel mass ejection is headed for orbit of a planet that I haven't heard of. 
And that's terrible. Okay. Start with some stations. And we've already got a uh, prerequisite over here. Blank observation frames. Next is the... Well, I remember this from the main bus. Uh, the next is a lot of telescopes. Although maybe not quite so many as this, especially with beacons. Uh, so we put in a blank observation frame and cold thermofluid. We get out a specific type of observation frame and 25 degree thermofluid. Um, should we combine all of that into one block? We could probably do all that in one block. We could even use uh, crafting combinators if we really wanted to, but that would be a lot of crafting combinators. So we only have one physical input and one fluid input. Even if we do all three of these in one block, it's all just blank observation frame plus negative 100 degree thermofluid. Which space science is the most complicated one? ETA zero seconds is a bit of a short time to prepare. This is true. Uh, I think we saw a warning earlier though. Dark Rail, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. It's Deep Space 4, or Deep Space as a whole. Yeah, I think uh, the implicit context with what someone said there was um, out of like the early data cards. I think they were saying Astro is the most complicated. I would probably have said uh, Bio myself. I got sp basic space science down and not sure which I should go for next. Uh, energy science. Because... Energy science... Uh, two. Gives you pylon substation, wide area beacon, portable RTG2. It's a lot of quality of life. Well, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Also, I just realized... Oh, no, we need Astro for this. All the more reason to get cracking on Astro. There will be a step for T4 Astro and Energy that makes them a little harder by default. Uh, before I forget, do we have... I don't think we've made any telescopes here. Um, time is going to have to tick over before that switches. I like the one that allows space rails. Yeah, energy... I think it's energy one. Um, in fact, if I were to play through this again, uh, instead of building like a proper production ch chain for energy science pack one, I would have just churned out 50 of these with, even if I just have to move things around myself so that I could skip the main bus. Just use a bot build or whatever it takes. Just get 50 of those, get space rail. That is, if like me, you are inclined to use rail a lot. Uh, so, let's send our scaffolders over here, builders over here. Bio gives upgrades, which is nice, but not worth rushing. Yeah. There was some good stuff we got in Bio 2, but nowhere near as, like, game-changing as uh, energy. Okay, so... I'm thinking we will probably do 
uh, a big drop off for the frames. And I'm not entirely, entirely sure what the shape of it is going to be. I need to get those. Oh, wow. Can we finish placing the signals so that the game can stop lurching? Please. There we go. It's exactly what I did. I rushed trains and now I'm taking forever to do all the blocks. Fair enough. I mean, there is an insane amount of stuff to do in space exploration. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, we need the... Telescopes are getting built very, very quickly. Fantastic. They're, they're getting built so quickly, I think we'll just go pick some up right now. And let's update the logistics for this one telescope. That's not a telescope, that's an artillery turret. They they look similar, but they have slightly different functions. Okay, what is the stack size for a telescope? 50, really? Okay. Where did they go? Let's get the one at the back. Telescope 50. And I can't tell which one it is. I hope it's this one. Alright, are you requesting 50 telescopes? No. Damn it. Okay, could, could, could you just stop for a second, please? Just, just wait here a moment. Okay, so the one down the bottom left, we're going to have you request telescope. Fantastic. Back to the mall with you. Maybe help your bots catch up by not standing quite as far away. Energy catalogs do need the mirrors, which is the only hard part of Astro. Mirrors. Do you mean the frames? Oh, mirrors. Yeah, there's a... Uh... Well, in the rail block system, we calculated that there's not going to be much of a need for multispectral mirrors throughput-wise. Um, oh, that was for energy. We already did that. Yeah, so when we made uh, flat solar panels, we just had a separate output for multispectral mirrors. Um, and that's probably going to be enough for the entire game. Mirrors... here they are. Okay. So, did we get our telescopes? We did get a few... How many have we... Okay, I can't actually see how many telescopes we've made because we're using an auto-crafter. Um... But... It's probably enough to get some idea of the size and shape of all of this. If possible, I would like to do uh, all three in this block. Although I'm not sure how I'm going to shape that. Hi Hex, your factory is looking good. Thank you Jax. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, so, let's see how many we can fit around one of these, for starters. 
I might end up using the same layout again over here, except I think I remember having serious problems with fluid throughput, uh, especially reaching over here in the main bus, so we'll see. Um, but it's pretty simple 3x3 three three layout here. How fast are these individually? Without a beacon, one per second for the physical items. So probably... I'm wondering if we can shape it like this. I'm thinking probably not. With the inserters and stuff. Let's find out. By default, we'll go for... Where do my speed modules go? It would probably help if I didn't turn off my logistic requests. Thank you for the follow... The Frimp. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Actually, I think I'll steal some speed threes from over here. I think I dropped them off earlier. I only need a few. We've already got 24 speed module sixes. That's actually really good compared to my expectations for now. Um, no rods though. And then I'd suggest rushing a little bit of energy too for those sweet, sweet pylon substations. Absolutely. Those are such a game changer. I mean, look at this. That's... That's got overlapping coverage for, for the entire rail block. In fact, I think we don't need this one. We do. Okay, we got some speed modules back. Let's head down this way. Um... Our default. Uh, this would have been faster, actually. I think this is nev negative 70% power consumption. And by the time I got there, never mind. Yep, that's good. So, how fast would this be? Uh, exactly the same. Wait, what? Uh, speed plus 80%. Oh, I was looking at the wrong one because this isn't touching all of them. Uh, 1.36 per second individually. So we could perhaps... Hmm. We'd have to use long arms for both if I did that. Um, yeah. I can see why I would have done it this way. Um, wait, where's the... Oh, the physical output has to be on the other side as well. I want to see if I can come up with a different layout this time, though. Um, we could always just have underground pipes like this. And that gives us one tile for input, one tile for output. And we could have them together in the middle for the whichever fluid. So...
That's a much neater looking build. We'll see. Oh, we can flip it. Fantastic. Okay, uh, how many of these can we fit under the bacon? That's going to be shared. Probably just two row, uh, two columns like this. Although this would have to be another tile apart. I think. Which is fine. That's not the worst. Um, except if we do this, are we able to do the fluid on this side? I don't think so. We can make it wider though and still fit all of this. What if we do something like this? We could even use some undergrounds to tighten that up a bit if we want to. Okay. Bring that in a little bit. And copy down here. one tile of beacon touching at the top and the bottom it looks like. Okay, do we have room to do that three times? I don't think so. Even if we push this all the way to the side. Let's bring this over here. And this over here. Uh, and we are... How many tiles short here? Bearing in mind that could share. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. About sixteen tiles. I don't think... So we need to squeeze it like four tiles closer together per column. We can do two if we move it in like this. That gets us halfway there. And then this is going to have more undergrounds. A lot of undergrounds. Um, can we get it one tile closer? I don't think so. We could reduce the pipe count um, by doing this. And use some undergrounds for the... Uh... Wait, does that reach? It does. Okay, that saves a few undergrounds. If we did the same thing over here, this isn't actually going to save us any But I think I do like this better.
Probably could have done that quicker with a deconstruction planner. Telescopes can only make three types, indeed. Fourth one is astronomic data. If it wasn't so many small uh, buildings, I would consider using a crafting combinator because they've all got exactly the same input. UV, observational, and blank. The only difference is the amount of cold thermofluid. Um, but for one thing, if you want it to be close together, where do you even put a crafting combinator here? We've already run out of room. Um, okay, so we'll do the same thing on this side, I think. the matter. Undergrounds. And then... I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure this is not going to save us enough space. I flip it, it doesn't do anything. Oh. Move this one tile over again. Actually, maybe it will. So close. One, two, three tiles. Actually, two tiles, because... These pipes could share an input. Um, hmm. Is there a way? One, two. We literally just need to save one tile on both sides. Could reduce it another tile if you do it on half belts? You mean like, uh... Oh, that's a good idea. I hope the rate calculator agrees. 16.32 per second. Yeah, it probably is going to be good enough even if we speed this up as much as possible. 26.88 per second is slightly too much, um, but I don't care. Let's do that. So if we if we output to the same spot, let's delete all this. And delete this. Start editing this one. Uh, remove all of the long handed inserters. Remove all of the underground belts in this column. Uh, remove all of these as well, actually. Output this like so. Loop. Uh, Let's bring this over a bit. Okay. Some regular space pipe. Blueprint. Snap to grid relative. Uh, that's a bit off, but it should be fine. Copy, paste, and flip. 
and then so the input has to be on the on the side closer to the telescopes the output is going to be on the other side and then we need to unfortunately we'll have to have a splitter here that will um a little bit of the input product is going to be stuck here forever But, other than that, I'll just use the frame, uh, the blank observation frame, as the value for this, so that it'll, it'll be universal across all of the recipes. We'll have three times beacon at the top and three times beacon bottom of the build. Uh, maybe. I, I think this is going well, though. Um, so we'll put this a little closer. And then flipping it does literally nothing. Uh, this thing's going to be in the way, so let's remove it. Actually, let's put this right about... I was going to say here, but maybe here instead. Okay, and then... We could have those share a pipe if we want to, but we've got the space to spare. Actually, this is overlapping. I don't think that would matter. Um, I think we'll do it like this. Fantastic. Uh, it is okay if these touch each other. It's just that I want more, poss more potential throughput with the fluid. Uh, how much thermofluid does this use? 1,000. That's not too bad. We'll have... Uh, which temperature is it? Cold. And we'll just confirm that all of that is cold. So, infrared... Visible. Wait. No. This goes here. And this one's visible. And this one should already be... We need more uh, telescopes. Let's go pick some up. Uh, but that one should already be... The third one. Um, in that case, we're going to need more fluid. I'll just double check all of those recipes were set correctly. Um, which one of these uses more? 391, 522. Let's just multiply that by 3. We might need approximately 1500 cold thermofluid per second. So I think we'll just put both of our inputs at both of these stations. Actually, the throughput of the... the station throughput of the frames is probably overkill. Not quite. The entire block will use 195 uh, blank observation frames per second if it's going at full speed. So... Yeah, having two of these stations like this is actually not that weird. 
let's see, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six inputs on each side. I don't like that. How much does this use? Uh, 97.92. Bit over two belts. I'm just trying to think of the best way to merge and split and everything with the belts. It's going to be more than enough to saturate, so we don't need a proper belt balancer or anything. Uh, just to confirm, each column needs less than half of a belt. So, I think we just do a... Like a 4 to, f uh, four, to 4 balancer and take one of the outputs off. Since it's going to saturate, we don't need a, a proper balancer. And we'll need to wait, no, we need to balance this first before we cut off one of the uh, inputs or outputs rather. So we'll use the corner one. Use a splitter in the middle so one input belt feeds both sides. Um, we could do that. Actually, now that I think of it, uh, didn't I make a really nice... 8 to 8... Uh, thing shaped just for such an occasion? Fantastic. Let's see, if we put this here, ish, let's turn this around. It's going to go over there, and we'll need a right side version of that. Why are there f five of these? Oh, that goes somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, that's not even part of it. Okay, where's the middle? Right here. Use red inserters to use less pipes in the build. Uh, we started with red inserters, and we got rid of them so that we could make this a bit more narrow. Uh, Zwiers, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so I think we'll just... Just get rid of this. And this one's going. We need to put half belts. Just swipe belts with pipes. Swipe belts with pipes? Um, oh, and I just realized we could actually fit pumps here as well. That's probably going to help if we have any fluid issues. It means swap. Swap belts with pipes. 
Oh, I, yeah, I see what he means, but it's not going to... Yeah, I think we'll actually just put pumps in there. Yeah, I might even get rid of the 3B connections. Um, so that we can spam pumps between the vertical pipes. We'll see if we have that much trouble with the uh, fluid throughput first. Okay. So this is going to go here, and this is going to go here. We could probably put that a bit closer. And we could probably copy the same thing over this way. And we could probably move all of this a few tiles up, but we'll do that at the end. Okay, so that's going over here. And this one is going here. And we'll copy most of this flip it. Copy this part, flip it. We can definitely move all of this a couple of tiles up. Let's do that. Except I think we'll keep the substation pylon in its traditional location. We could move this one more tile up still, actually. Having a little trouble seeing if this is it's this part we need to change. Let's get our construction spiders back here. Fantastic. Should be trivial to connect the pipes where we want them. This is just lining up way too well. Fantastic. Let's do this. I might add a pump in there though. And a 15 over here. I'm sure we'll put a pump in that location. And over here might be slightly trickier. Not really. That's actually a great fit as well. If the splitter face is down, you need less space and get a cleaner build. If the splitter face is down. Uh, we still need... Uh, you might be right. So this can go one tile down. Okay, let's patch that. Maybe here as well. Let's 
delete all of this. And like so. I don't know if we'll be able to do it here though. Yeah, no, definitely not. This part's already as tight as it's gonna get. So we're not going to be able to move this up a tile. Um, this one, however... That looks pretty good. Can we just copy-paste this? I think we can. NB, your trash slots are full of telescopes? Oh. <laughs> yes. And speed modules as well. Well, it's a bit late to worry about it now. Um, speaking of late, it's almost time to finish the stream. But let's see how much more of this we can get done real quick. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we'll be able to find... I do want to put a pump here, actually. Probably do the exact same thing here. We've already got a pump there. It's probably going to be enough. Uh, any one of these just needs only a hundred and only two hundred thermofluid per second. So I don't think we're going to have any issues. Oh, I kind of, we're, ju we're just going to rotate these. Um, I kind of laid it out so that the input would be the output. But either can be either, it's fine. Wait a sec. That didn't actually rotate it, did it? The last two. Whoops. Two. And one, two. And a one, two. 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 And one, two. So our input fluid comes down the middle. Output fluid goes out the sides. Fantastic. Alright, that will do, I think. Uh, we need some... Like observation frame and over here as well. Connect this over here. Set up our drop off. Don't forget to connect. to the storage tanks. And the Elptian train stop. And we're looking for uh, light observation frames and negative 100 degree thermo fluid. Let's just double check that. Yep. Uh, 
blank observation frames. Stack to 200, actually. Okay. So we're going to ask for two train loads of those. And a bit over one train load of uh, hold demo fluid. Trains should be on their way in a moment. Next is just doing the train outputs. Um, since we need three outputs and we've got plenty of space, I think we'll do it like this. Okay, so how much are we getting out of this? Uh, for each type, 65.2 per second, it looks like. Exactly the same for all three of them. So two belts uh, for each. And that's going to go here, here, and here. I think. Uh, I should have just grabbed my balance loader. Okay. Six is merging into two. I don't think there's going to be a particularly clean way to do that. Is it going to be okay if I... Yeah, I think so. Hey, it's already working. Fantastic. Um, so I'm going to have two belts here and merge this one into two of them. Isn't it four lines, not six? Uh, what do you mean? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Yes, indeed. Whoops. <laughs> well, that's going to make it easy to merge into two belts, obviously. Fantastic. And this is a perfect fit as well. Yay, not asleep yet? Indeed. Uh, did this have to be one tile off where I want it to be? I don't like pointing the inserters at corners. But... Considering the rate that we're getting, it's probably okay. Move that a little bit. I guess I could have done a double pickup here, but we've got so much space, we'll just keep it simple. OK, 
Okay, so that is going here. Uh, what's this called? Infrared. Infrared observation frame provider. And I have a bunch of visibles stuck in my inventory as well. Only question is how we're going to merge those ones. I think we have our answer already. Yeah, that's going to line up really well, actually. Like this. And I like uh, this. I wonder what would look better here though. This is too short for an underground. That'll do. And chuck these 80 in here. Fantastic. Uh, which one's this green one? Visible observation frame provider. And last but not least, I think we'll flip this around. Actually, let me just line up the station first. Or I could put it up here, but then the train's got slightly further to go. Also, I need to signal this stuff. Why is this one flashing? Oh, I put this too close. Yeah, so that we can have it symmetrical. Let's bring this in one tile. That should be fine. How do I... There we go. Alright, so that I'm thinking there's probably a spot or two where I've made this mistake downstairs. I'll have to go have a look at that. I'll flip this. be totally fine. Okay. Uh, so where do we bring these together? Probably down this way. That's almost perfect. Actually, it's going to be consistent with what we did over here, so I guess I can live with it. Copy, paste this thing, flip it around, and we're done. And then make sure that connects to the input. Station name, UV observation frame. Fantastic. Okay, so that's our frames. Is that actually full? No, something's wrong. Oh, we don't have a... We don't have a fluid output yet. That would probably help. Okay. Uh, can we fit one here? I don't think so. We could fit it down here. 
But I'm thinking if we have uh, four stations like this, uh, it would be a little bit better if... How much have we got? I can probably pick all of that up. It'd probably be better if I have the other physical one up here. Um, we can probably just cut and paste that. Nice and easy. Don't forget our signals. And then... Uh, just for the extra storage space, and because we have the room, we could do... Uh, storage tanks on both sides here, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. How fast are we going to be outputting 25 degree thermo fluid? Uh, 1400. I think we can probably manage, especially if we have it coming in from two directions. We'll set up this as an active pickup, in other words, just a high priority uh, pickup station. Uh, provide priority 100, provide threshold 100k. Fantastic. 25 degree thermo fluid. And then. Then it's just a question of how we pipe this stuff. I might put a 9 over here so that I can connect this like so. Doesn't line up the same way. 9, 10, 11. Um, we don't have a good way to do 11. Wrong output pipes? Uh, good point. Let's turn these pumps around. Thank you, fat boy. Okay, so the output pipes are on the outside. Use this simple mnemonic to remember. Um, I don't know about the shape of this part. Okay, so I want half of this going to this side. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do a good connecty thing here. 9, 10, 11, that's annoying. We could do like 9, 3, 3, and just use a couple of onesies over here. So half of the block is going to give us 783 per second. That should be quite manageable. We'll use a pump as well. And that's actually... A really unfortunate position. Let's do this instead. Seven, eight, nine. Fantastic. Okay. Also, the underground that's backwards. Look for that too. 
Oh, the one that I intentionally put backwards? Or this one? I guess both. Okay. Can we perhaps connect this like so? And down here. Okay, that's a good fit. Let's put the pump up here. And... There we go. Middle set has it reversed to... Middle set... Like this. Okay, I think we did it. I think that's it. Why have the other ones continued, but UV observation is... St oh, right. Fantastic. Look at that. Repetitive beats. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. Uh, it's a pretty simple few recipes, but I'm pretty satisfied with the layout and everything here. That is our first... well, second, really. Uh, step towards... Astroscience in the rail block. And we've already got thousands and thousands of each of these. It's really just the blank observation frames that effectively cost anything. Um, this is just energy and nothing else. Did you fix the pylon in the middle too? The pylon? This one? Oh, like, uh, so it lines up where it normally does. There we go. Okay. So I think it's about time we find a stream to raid for today. Sorted sleep time. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Who is streaming today? How about... I think it's been a while since we gave Phoenix a raid. Let's do that. Wait, let me just check. Is that who I think it is? And are they speaking... Just got to do a little basic checking of what I'm dropping you guys into. Right, let's head back to the mall then. And scaffolding spiders as well. It's actually a really satisfying build to look at. I like the sound of it. Okay, so infrared observation frame. Uh, visible observation frame, and UV observation frame. Fantastic.
All right. Uh, time for a raid. Let me just make sure I type this right. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord. Where did the sound go? Okay, that was weird. Uh, check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you like. If you have any questions or anything, by all means, let me know. And thanks for hanging out. Take care, guys. See ya, Fatboy. Jacks. Repetitive beats. And away we go. Thanks for the raid.